The following conversation and Talking Chimps podcast is a really, really enjoyable one. It's uh, open, honest, vulnerable, and we talk about you know the highs and lows of how Amy has been going through during this period of time, uh, talking about things that I've never heard her talk about. Uh, we talk about history and heritage and the roots of where she comes from, where, how she identifies, and how that's so relevant and, and, and poignant to the current times of what's going on around the world. And we reflect and, and discuss and talk about our connections and relations with uh, our heritage. We talk about the environment, climate change, and then a bit of history on Australia Day as well, and many other topics. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. I really enjoyed it, uh, and I hope you enjoy it too. Where were your parents born? Um, Dad was born in South Africa. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's the the. That's why I wanted to ask. Yeah, and then mum's side of the family is Greek. Now, I know you've got that. That Greek, oh. Egyptian background. There you go. Yeah. South African and Greek. Yeah. Was your, was it father who was born in Greece? No, dad. Sorry. Dad, South Africa, Cape Town. Yeah. And then mum's parents um, were born in Greece. Yeah. Uh, Kalamata is where I'm pretty sure my grandma or my yaya, where she was born. Huh. Um, in a village there and then i think my my grandpa or papu is yes. not too far from there i can't remember the specific specifics i don't want to say the wrong place have you, were you yeah. did you meet your grandparents yeah well not from my dad's side um they passed away when i was pretty young um and they were obviously still over in south africa yeah um but my mum's side of the family like pretty close with them um he passed away in 2010 so that was well 10 years ago now and then um yeah, yeah she's she's still going strong she's 84 does she cook yeah not so much now that yeah. everyone has to tell her like stop doing so much yeah same just don't do it because yeah. <laughs> she's obviously got mobility issues now or just yeah. just natural the natural process of getting older um and she yeah. wants to you can tell that she wants to <laughs> and then whenever anyone else cooks She'll taste it. She'll be like, oh, yeah. It's Some nice. Of, <laughs> I got, I have one. I say, it's weird to say I have one grandparent left. It's like, yeah, that's a, I'm the same. You say yeah, that? It's left. like a weird thing. Yeah. It's like, we don't own them. <laughs> They're not ours. One left. What do we got? Like playing like cards? Like collectible, yeah. Oh, it's so weird. But I just catch myself. What else do you say? Like I have, yeah, anyway. Um, I'll and just say it's still here. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's better. And one of my, some of my fondest memories I like, and this is what I've done in the past and what I'm trying to still do now. Mm. It's tough around now, kind of trying to see her, but cooking mm. with them. Some of your fondest memories are, cook, are enjoying their food, yeah. right? And so what I've been trying to do is film her process of cooking, mm. join in, so then that can get passed on. They don't even have a proper recipe. They just grab no. like, the flour and the sugar and they're like, psh, psh, and you're like, what How much was that? And you're like, yeah, what quantity? Where's your kitchen scale? <laughs> <laughs> you don't weigh everything? <laughs> of course not. You don't count your macros? <laughs> <laughs> What's a macro? <laughs> um, do, you, do you have that? Like, do you have like a, like a favorite kind of memory and moment from those, yeah, those times? Um, probably the thing that we got most involved with, with my, uh, would have been around Easter time. And you, you crack know the, the eggs? Yeah, yeah, crack the eggs. But you know the little biscuits, the kuluria? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those things, they taste so good. Um, I gotta see, because there's so many Greek desserts. Mm. I gotta remember which one. Keep talking. Oh, you'll know them when you see them. So the biscuit, yeah, and yeah. you've gotta, you can make them into whatever shape you want. Oh, I, I, I wrote in Claudia. That's how bad <laughs> I spelled that. K-O-U. Jesus. L-O-U-R-I-A. K-A-U. K-O-U. Mm. L. L. O-U. O-U. R-I-A. Or to get called Kulurakia. Got it. Yes. I think that Akia makes it mean little. Ah, yes. I know these. Go on. Yeah. They just, the sweet biscuits, they just taste so good. And then there's like always those 
staples that you'd have in your house that would just magically appear at Easter time, like yeah. the, the tureki, the bread with the egg in the middle. Yeah. It's like the sweet bread. Do they put five cent piece in your... Wait, maybe... No, that's, my... a, that's a New Year's. Oh, okay. That's the New Year's bread. Um, but yeah, the, it's probably like so processed, the one, because you just buy it from the church. I've never seen anyone actually make the tureki. It's just comes pre-packaged yeah obviously you can make it yeah. from scratch but it's just something that people will give like at easter time and then you'll end up with two two of those you'll have a bag of <laughs> biscuits like this big you'll have chocolates and then it's like well yeah it's it's a really cool time mm. and um important to engage with that part of your your ancestry and history yeah 100 percent. because we, for, we we forget and we get disconnected mm. you know and having that deep rooted like have you been to greece no no so i've i went to south africa when i was three i can't even really count that as going there i think i'm pretty sure it was for um a funeral i don't think i attended it but i think mom and dad went i don't mm. know what i did i can't remember you're just being a baby Dude. yeah the only thing i do remember is like running up and down the plane you remember that and that's it that's the only thing i, I remember. trip out about people however they remember i don't shit know how so young. i don't know how i remember that moment but it must have been because when, it, or who knows, it could have been like a fabricated memory when mum right? was telling me that you were running that. up and down the yeah. plane and then I've just got this thing in my head of yeah. me running up and down the plane. Memory is a weird thing. Mm. We, I, I think we definitely do that. I, it, it's definitely called something where you, you will create memories from what other people tell you and mm. you will alter them. Mm. And it just shows you how faulty and shit <laughs> memory is, which is why- Or I, how powerful your brain is at just, just creating at, at, that. Right true perspective yeah that's perspective <laughs> um south africa i've heard is a, can be a pretty dangerous place yeah it is pretty hectic and i think <laughs> mum when when she was over there she just went for a walk yeah by herself came back and everyone was kind of like what have you just done and <laughs> she's all like eh, just went for a walk and <laughs> like how are, you, out. how are you how you like locals <laughs> yeah 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 wow like because it, it is pretty notorious for being a very dangerous place. And like, there's obviously, um, it's kind of segregated a bit from what I know in terms of like the rich part of the neighborhood mm. and the not so affluent. Um, but yeah, even things like driving down the street, you don't know if someone's gonna try and hijack your car, mm. that sort of thing. I haven't been there, so I can't, since I was that young, so I can't really comment on it, but it's still, I know, from friends who have been there semi recently that it's yeah it can be pretty full on but obviously a beautiful country at the same time isn't that the crazy where you have that that, that dichotomy of of chaos mm. and beauty yeah like it's i ran into somebody who followed me uh, a while ago on my strength of side page and he was south african and mm. i was asking him about it and he made a comment on you know because he lived there for most of his life mm. And he made a comment about home invasions being so common. And he was telling a story of like how he had to, you know, run this guy out of his house with, with a weapon, with a shotgun or something, um, because, you know, they were trying to break into his home, burgle his mm. home and steal. And I wonder, how does a place get to that point? Like, mm. do you have any idea of the history of it or what your, your, uh, your mother's I'm told you or stories? Nah, uh, only like, only a, a little bit from what I know about the history of it with with all the um, like the apartheid and and that sort of thing with the. I've heard that word. I'm not familiar. The blacks and the whites, and how it was kind of a shame for a, a black person couldn't be with a white person and yeah and that oh, sort but, of oh, thing. Oh, that's what apartheid. How do you say that? Apartheid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's that's obviously like one side of it and then i haven't i'll admit i haven't looked into too much into like the history of the country but just from what i know with um even nelson mandela and how big a figure he was mm. the fact that he was in jail for however long him being the leader of the country um but yeah it is it is crazy and and like South Africa is not even the only country in the world that's like that. There's there's other countries that are still like that. And you just think, wow, how lucky are we over here? Exactly. We're so sheltered. Oh. But there's even like crazy stuff that goes on here within this state. Absolutely. That we don't know about. Absolutely. Well, like or, well, that you do, or you do find out about it. You think, wow, 
how how does that happen? It, what, what do you, is what makes you think of that? Like, um, is there something like in particular that sparks oh, that? Like just just general, just thinking in general. Um, like I, I've got uh, a couple of friends who are police officers, yeah, and and they're obviously working at, at different places, but um, just some of the things that you see popping up on your news feeds. Like with someone, crime? Yeah, with crime. So-and-so's been shot. This has happened. This has happened. This has happened. This has happened. And you just think, wow, <laughs> that, that's not even like in my local area, but it's still within the state mm. that I'm living in. Look how ridiculous. Yeah. Well, like we said about earlier, you put a, like 100 people, 1,000 people in a room, you're going to mm. get some people who are going to be, you know, they're going to have some screws loose. Mm. And I think that's the troubled thing about an increasing population and access to all these resources and, and you... you no matter who you are, you can find your clan and your group, mm. right? Your community. Mm. And you can stray pretty easily as well. Yeah. I can see that at school. Yeah, what do you see? All the time. Like, you see the kids, like, starting out in year seven, they're all so innocent. Uh. And, like, they're, they're just kind of going through the motions, just happy, generally speaking. And then as they kind of start to get a bit older, they're obviously trying to figure out who they are, yeah. what they're interested in, what's their why, but then there's also those external peer pressure that external peer pressure of, oh, I've got to start to portray this image yeah. if I want to be liked and that sort of thing. And then they kind of will go off track. So you see this kid who may have been like, just love life, super, um, super bubbly, just excited. And then it might be, they might just get sucked in with the wrong crowd and then they end up diverting. And you know that that they've got a good family background and, the parents and everything is super supportive and they've got good siblings and, and that sort of thing, but they've just got into whatever it is with these people and they've just pulled them off track. Mm. So, you know, it's it. It's not all the time. It's not for every kid, but there's always like those those couple yeah. that you see. You what think, do you <sighs> put that down to? Did you see more that's environmental factors uh, influencing? Yeah, yeah. And I know you've said this so many times on this that we are products of our environment and that's mm. 100%. If you if you give someone a choice, like a 50-50 choice, which road are you going to take? Well, it's it's either going to go one of the two ways. So, yeah, an environment that 100% has, has an influence. Do you feel almost like a, not a burden, but a, but a responsibility? Like as a teacher, I think, and we were, before we started the podcast, we were clarifying like the remuneration that mm. teachers get and the responsibility as a teacher can be so much more than what the public perceives it. Like you can be like a third or if they're unfortunate enough not to have a second parent, a second parent, mm. right? One, I think, do you feel like teachers are remunerated fairly for the contribution they make is my, what I'm curious to hear your perspective. Um, Cause by the way, people don't li listen. You're a teacher. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think for me, I'm not in the job for the money side of things. Like I went, to it, went into it knowing that this like, six figures is not going to be attainable for a long, long time. Mm. Like I, and I showed you before the pay scale. Yeah, it's like a five to ten year thing. That, yeah, and how that works. So, um or even six figures, you won't get there unless you're a leading teacher. Yeah. So if for, for me, yeah, money isn't the reason why I'm doing it. Um, you can still definitely live comfortably. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, yeah, like I said, I didn't come into teaching thinking, oh, I want to get that sweet Ferrari. What drew you to it? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm have, yeah, you might get that, <laughs> that toy Ferrari. I'm going to have my holidays, <laughs> my 11 weeks, <laughs> 10, 11 weeks off a year <laughs> and cruise around in my Ferrari. Oh, right. <laughs> but, okay, then why did you get into it? Um, just because it's, well, I initially, I remember going through high school and work experience. And I was thinking, I love sport. I love being active. I want to be a PT. And I did work experience at Genesis in Ringwood and oh, it was shit. Really? <laughs> yeah. What was your experience I, like? I thought it was going to be... What do you think it was going to be? What thought, was it actually? I thought this is... The first problem was that I had this expectation yeah. and then reality was different. So obviously, I, the instant that's going to be let down if your expectations are too high. Yeah. Not that they were too high. I just thought that 
I was going to be shadowing a PT, perhaps just following them around with clients or if they were working the floor, just Fair see enough. what was going on. Seems normal. Yeah. I was in the back room sorting through like all these files, throwing stuff in the skip. I was um, <sighs> cleaning down the spin class bikes, which is fair. I'll clean equipment. Yeah. Like you got to get your hands dirty. But that was pretty much it. And then they, they kicked us to the, to the cafe um, for maybe a couple of hours on one of the days. And the guy who ran the little cafe there showed us how to make a coffee. It was like a five minute demonstration. Did I remember it? No, I need to actually do something mm. to learn it properly. Um, so yeah, that, that was pretty much it. It was just sorting through like old files and, and turfing things. You know what? I think there is a parallel to this story you're telling because the people who in that gym, you Genesis that you went to, mm. they chose the decision to, they had these young kids mm. And they could, they, they, you can foster, empower, and lead these mm. kids and show them something they've never seen before. Or you can take the path of least resistance and say, man, I don't have time for this. Go <laughs> yeah, over there. Go do these jobs that no one else wants to do. Exactly. I think that parallels teaching. There are a lot of teachers, mm. and we all have experienced them, who just mail it in. They don't care. They're trying to just get a check. They've been doing this for decades. They're not changing. And they're tired and they're, they're, they're not trying to be better leaders. And I just thought that was a common parallel. Do you see that? How often do you see that? So I think In teaching? Yeah, I think it's common. It, it's hard. Like obviously some, it's gonna happen in any career. It is. Like you, you're gonna get to a point where you start to become a bit stale and motivation's waning because you've done it for so, so long it's become monotonous like how many times <laughs> can you teach this curriculum it's like you've done school <laughs> 40 times you've done that year level mm. 40 times but it much. does refine doesn't it, it does change yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah it does refine and I'm, a, I'm not at that point where <laughs> I'm still very early on yeah. in my career um, but there's people that I work with some of my colleagues, like one who's in his mid fifties, he's probably like a few years off retirement and, and he just loves the job. Like he's taking long service leave next term, but he still said, oh, I'll probably still come in like one day a week just to say hello. Cause he just loves the kids. And that's, that's what he's, and that's what he's doing it for, which is what everybody, I would hope, <laughs> actually no, it's not everybody. Cause you do hear of some odd stories here and there. People yeah. are just there for the holiday, the kickbacks. But you hope. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be nice in, a, yeah, yeah, in an yeah. ideal world. Yes. Um, that everyone's there to, to make a difference. Um, so, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I've lost a chain of thought. <laughs> oh, your question. People getting stale in the yeah. profession. Yeah. Small minority. Small minority? Small minority. It probably depends on the school that you're at as That's well. That's really positive to hear. It's a small minority in your experience. Yeah. From at the school that I'm at, I've... It'd be hard, pretty hard for me to pick out ones that just, that, that just flat out don't give a shit. What about when you... Okay, so you, you do the experience of Genesis and you had a shit experience and it didn't inspire you mm. to become a trainer and coach. Mm. Funny, I thought I would think, imagine if you came to a place like this, you had like a guy like Christian. Yeah. How different I know. could your that, life be? Yeah. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have taken the, the teaching path. I might have stuck with that. Yeah. Because then after work experience i was thinking ah maybe like physio maybe osteo and then i have my head well pff, i've got to get this atar score mm. how am i going to get that, that goddamn atar score do i really want to do that like prerequisites biology <laughs> i did you know one and two and you learn i hated it mm. i hated it i hated it photosynthesis plants i'm like come on <laughs> come on photosynthesis. like i know whatever I know. <laughs> it just happens <laughs> I know it's relevant. Can I drop a bomb? Yeah. Do you know 50% uh, of the oxygen that we breathe comes from algae in the fucking ocean? Yeah, seaweed. What are you talking about? Seaweed sucks out CO2. What? 50%? Yeah. You know how important the goddamn ocean is? Yeah. And seaweed in particular. And we are polluting the shit out of it? Yeah. Guys, won't be able to breathe. Yeah. That's what, like, I'm pretty big on that environmental side of things. Yeah. Sustainability. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> I actually only found out that seaweed fact, uh, like, a few weeks ago. I went into one of my colleague's classes. He's teaching Unit 3-4, Outdoor Ed. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You'll hate that I said Outdoor Ed. What's outdoor called? Environmental Science. Uh, no, nah, that is a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
and they were just real so they were looking at the co2 spikes uh-huh. over time the last 10 years and psh, oof, the spike now it's like up here whereas it used to be a little bit lower a little bit lower mm-hmm. so it's pretty alarming when you look at that sort of data yeah um yeah, but yeah and then we were listening to there was like a, a zoom conference call between oh i only really remember remember um damon gamo he's the guy that produced like the 2040 film um and on that they were talking about seaweed and like it's power to just <laughs> suck all that bad stuff co2 out of the out of the, out uh, of the air yeah yeah and provide us oxygen yeah like that's seaweed <laughs> like you know? that thing just, it just chills there at the beach half the time you pick it up you launch it at someone like right. you don't think that Ooh. was it seaweed specifically yeah, that was the example. Like, it's probably algae as well. There's probably a variety of right things, but um, but yeah, that was just like blew my mind. I'm like, huh. I uh, I wa- now I learned that from David Attenborough, who's I would pay a huge amount of money to speak to him. Oh, like this. I just want to dinner with him. Just yeah, get a you coffee know. Yeah, just hear him order. Or at least Rogan, get him on. <laughs> like, that's a treasure. That is a treasure of a human being. Um, look, uh, yeah, I think it'd be great to speak to a guy like that. But um, I watched a video on climate change, uh, a channel called Kurzgeist, which is a really good educational channel. I would recommend for you, for your students. Mm. They they teach they teach all these like complicated topics. They're very well researched in like animations, mm. beautifully made, millions of very popular. Um, and apparently, Australia has one of the highest carbon footprints per person more than triple the global average and slightly more than the US and Canada mm. which I found interesting per person we're not doing very good mm. it doesn't help when you've got the the government that isn't supportive of renewables mm. and they're so hell bent on fossil fuels and, and using coal and that sort of thing and like the um the whole thing last year with the Great Australian Bite and Equinor and what, how what was happening with that? They, Can you explain that? So, Equinor, this organisation, they wanted to to drill in the Great Australian Bite, which is um, south of South Australia. Yeah, they wanted to drill in there for for oil. Of course they do. Yeah, so there was like these big, or not super big, but there were the, all these protests. Um, I actually attended one of them. Yeah. It was like a paddle out, so you get your surfboard. We went to oh, nice. St. Kilda, um, myself and, and a couple of others. And yeah, it was literally just like you paddled paddled your board out into circular formation. <laughs> it was a cool experience. Wow. Um, and there were a lot of people there and there were a number of them going on around the country and around the world at that time. Um, and uh, then for activism, just, just yeah, no, for for that cause for yeah. the the bite, um, and then I think it was a little bit earlier this year that they announced that it wasn't going to happen, so the deal was off. Wow. So, do you think def- they succumbed to the pressure? I think I think so. You think that helped? Yeah, I think definitely. I th- and it was just cool to experience. I've I've never thought to do something like that if you ask 18 year old or 18 year old me i hated the idea of politics i was like eh, i don't care it's not relevant to me yeah but now same. like getting a little bit older and being a bit more aware of what's going on in the world and that you can kind of one little you might not think that that one person can can make a difference but if you've got one person that's thinking oh should i do this should i not then they do it Next person, should I do this? Should I not? Then they do it. Then they do it. Then they do it. Then they do it. Then it's you're gonna make you're gonna make some noise. It's a web, Mm. and I love that you brought that up because that that is the thing. It's 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 not like I'm only one person. What can I do? It's I'm only one person. What can't I do? Mm. Like there is so much potential, Mm. you know, and like you're describing, like one person to the next, and then it's. Then this this is just by having conversations one on one. Yeah. Because then they influence more people, and then it continues like a pyramid. Yeah, flow and effect. Now, if you have uh, a you, with the use of social media, wow, you can have a pretty profound effect. Mm. However, what happens with social media is we have millions of people who, with large influences 
who are saying different, maybe contradicting things. Sometimes they come together, like, you know, they've come together for the, like, how amazing. When has you ever seen in our lifetime the whole world protest against police brutality mm. and injustice? Mm. Do you remember that happening? Huh, that's, and it's, it's crazy to think that, that now, what, what's going on right now is going to be stuff that's taught in the future, in like, history. Yeah. Like, this is a historical time mm. right now. Or I guess you could argue that, 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 that every time, that every moment is, is a historical moment because it's in the past. But mm. True. now, like, the whole Black Lives Matter movement, mm. that's been massive. And then you think of like, Greta Thunberg mm. with the climate, the climate change. change that they're like they're big moments mm. and we're living through them like you think um generations before us they're big things they had to deal with like the, all the wars yeah. the other pandemics that that arose that sort of thing yeah very serious stuff yeah but so is this yeah and ours is more now skewed towards like human rights mm. and which is which is awesome that so many people are on board, and of course you're going to have people with opposing views. Like you're never going to have everyone. On I board. think you want that though. Yeah, you yeah. don't want everybody in an echo chamber, just all agreeing with each other. Mm. It, it does get frustrating though when when you just want someone to see your point of view, mm. depending on what it is. But yeah, I know the the Black Lives Matter thing that that was, that was a a pretty big one. Yeah. Have you had some conversations where you've uh, you've had those moments? You because you just you just pointed it out, like when someone just you just want them to see your view and perspective. Mm. Is there something of recent not, that not so much, not with the people that I know. The people because obviously the people you surround yourself with, they're going to have similar values and beliefs to Usual. you. So it's like preaching to the choir. Yeah. Um, but just seeing posts, comments on social media, people with that opposing view, and you're like. Oh, Really? Yeah. Really? When the, the ones that are going on about um, white people and how they cop racism too. Of course they do. But then the whole all lives matter argument, that sort of thing. It's You've got to steer away from the, the generalisation. Yes, all lives matter. Every individual matters. But this is the the issue at the moment is that we're focusing on this minority group that yeah. has copped it for so long. Yeah. Why can't you just jump on board? <laughs> right. Follow that. Acknowledge that that perspectives need to change surrounding that and attitudes need to change. Yeah. Around that. It's it's tough. It's it's a uh, it, here's the thing. It's a nuanced conversation, mm. right? It's it's a strange time where you can say the words all lives matter and get into serious arguments <laughs> or if you're a big enough person you know be i don't even like to say cancelled mm. like we're living in cancel culture what is that yeah but you know what i mean like they're, they're gonna get um shot down potentially by mm. tens of thousands but i think people do that because I mean, you, you tell me your perspective. I think when people get emotional about saying those words, all lives matter, I think because they may believe it distracts and it distracts and it doesn't acknowledge the main problem at hand, mm. right? Minority groups getting discriminated against and police brutality, right? Where it sounds like if you just hop on board, it would say it's like, but if you, if you just say that, you might be ignoring this over here. But the thing is, just because you say that all lives matter doesn't mean you disagree mm. or you don't, you're not for also minority groups like Black Lives Matter getting, mm. getting discriminated against. But everyone's going to interpret that differently. Mm. 100%. And there's that little analogy, and I saw this floating around um, on the internet. I 
people saying all houses matter and then someone's like no nah, but this one's on fire why are you watering that house uh, and, there's, and there's no fire wow. in it, and it's that's uh, really good but but this one's on fire wow yeah <laughs> why aren't you watering this it's one? true like yes they do matter yeah but you might have some ambers over here right yeah. But you got a fucking blazing fucking fire over here. Yeah. Get some water to it. Yeah. That's, gr- that's a great analogy. Yeah. I think that encapsulates it really well. Mm. And yeah, so that little image that I saw that I was like, yeah. That's it. I agree with that. But it's a problem about social media. Yeah. I and mean, we all know it's like. It's just up to the individual and how they interpret things. Yeah. I think he, he, the problem is text. Hmm. Typing mm. is such a shit way to communicate. Oh, you don't know how to read someone. Come on. <laughs> Unless you know that person, you know them. Yeah. And you know their tonalities and, yeah. and how they, they speak. And, yeah. And, you know. This is why I think I'm going to do this until I die. Like, <laughs> I think this podcast will just happen. I hope it happens forever. Talk chimps forever. Right. <laughs> I get a shirt. Forever Talk and ever. Talk chimps forever. <laughs> no, because... We've never been more connected and we've never had more reason to be disconnected. Mm. And so you lose a lot of this. Mm. I bet all those people who made you, all those people who like bother us when we see those comments on social media, those ignorant comments that can spark emotion in you. Come on, man. Mm. Fuck you, man. You don't understand, man. If you get most of those people in a room with you eye to eye, I think most people will be able to have an okay, reasonable conversation. Mm. Now, whether you would change their perspective or not is, is different. Uh, but I think most people feel like, uh, well, one, like I said, it's a very poor form of communication, tonality. Um, you got short limitations for text. And I think it is up to us as individuals to do to to be the change and so communicate by by different better means so you can have less ambiguity less misinterpretation you know video voice messages right if you're going to still stay on social media like like let's try and upgrade the level of our communication let's try and like i don't have i made a rule for myself i will not have I will do my best to not have any important, meaningful conversations with anybody over text. Text messenger is, is a form of back and forth, quick communication, whether it's professionally with clients or whether it's, whether it's organizing things or, or whether it's just keeping in contact with people I wouldn't ordinarily um, see very often. But I think maybe we should like voice messages that we send as a group to each other, right? <laughs> yeah. <It's just laughs> Jeremy Pozzo loves <laughs> a yeah. voice message. It's, it's better than text. Yeah. It's not better than person. It's mm. not better than a call, maybe. Mm. But it's pretty. It's it's an up, up there. And so I think that's something we can consider in trying to change our communication. Mm. And on the flip side as well. Give me the flip how side how crap social media can be. And we know that um, social media just adds all these pressures in terms of um, individuals and, and I guess how they perceive themselves and how they want to like be portray this image, da 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 da. You know that there's a lot of mental health issues that, that can be linked to social mm, media because people are trying to, trying to get however many likes they're trying to get however many followers whatever um in particular like with with the younger demographic like kids at school like we know that that that's an issue like trying to get all these people on your snapchat Mm. whatever but during what's going on in the world lately with the whole coronavirus and and being in in lockdown and not being able to be face to face with your friends, that how powerful social media has yeah. been for that. Connect, yeah. Generally speaking, you'd always be like, have face-to-face conversations with people, get off your phone when you are sitting with someone. But now it's like, we need it. Yeah, now, yeah. Because I can't see you. Yeah. 
I feel alone. Mm. Video call. And it's funny how many um, apps have now chat. Well, I guess Facebook owns Instagram now, but I think they saw that there was this other app house party where people, you could just like jump in, you could have like a little chat room. So we could just be video calling one-on-one and then someone else might see that, that we're, having this conversation and they'll just jump in like random can, strangers can do that no 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 people that you're friends with oh, unless cool. you've got unless you've got your oh, interesting your privacy settings it's but like apparently a, that app's very dodgy so i wouldn't go downloading it and well, using uh, tiktok's it. owned by the chinese government so you ain't getting me to download <laughs> that, <Fuck> all that. <laughs> but then facebook then had a similar thing they're like they called it they've called it rooms mm. or, or group rooms or, or something like that where you could do the exact same thing i haven't used it but but that's obviously something they saw that that company was being successful with it. They were yeah. getting a lot of people downloading it. So then psh, we're going to do the same thing. That's what they do. Yeah. So I just found that that was interesting that everyone, or not interesting. It's kind of a given that if, if something's getting traction, it's being successful, that more people are going to jump on the bandwagon. Yes. And other companies will try and emulate it. Yeah. Espe- and it'll be, the opportunity is this adversity. So in this time where people feel like they're disconnected because they can't connect in person, mm. let's connect them virtually. Yeah. Due to the circumstances. Yeah. Did you go, you, you went to the, gre- uh, the bite, what's it called? The great? Uh, the fight for the bite. Fight for the bite. Yeah. Um, protest. in South Australia. No, nah, w- oh, that's where the bite is. Protest was here. Oh, okay. Have you done something like that before? No, that was the first time. I'd how, ever done how old something are you like when that. you did that? Or how many years ago? I think it was last year or the year before. Yeah. Did you do, did you go to that, to the, did you go to a, uh, the Melbourne Black Lives Matter protest? Did you see any of that? No, no, I didn't. Um, I Obviously, I did see it. It would have been good to to go, but given what's going on yeah. and the people that I live with at home, like my mum's got compromised immune system, so I've got to be careful Absolutely. with that. So had all this stuff with the virus not been going on, 100%. I would have been there mm. but then i had to think about like i said who i live with and For then sure. that i've got to front up to work yes it's not with, just you with kids You're in con- and and, and not kids. even just not even just kids like my colleagues teachers yeah so yeah 100 percent. you got to think about that it's difficult because we can see now at least in america i don't think we've seen the ramifications in australia yet i think we're doing actually pretty good still mm. um you know even though it's ramping up it's like yeah we're testing a lot more too but America's seeing some pretty big spikes. Uh, I think they have like something over 6,000 in, in one of the One the of the states. states? Yeah. I don't even, it's too much for me right now. I was like, 6,000 and everyone's slipping their lid over here about 77, uh, yeah. which is still, it's still obviously full on given that if you look at the data and how it's, it's, it's spiked up. and it's... Well, it was 100 and something uh, yesterday, mm. right? It's like, yeah. And then, then, they, then they had these apartment buildings in like um, North Melbourne that they found uh, and they, they have, you cannot leave this apartment building. They have police on the fucking floors. Yeah, did you see the photos? Of, of, of the police in the floors? Yeah. No, I haven't. Jamie, pull that up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> chop, chop. <laughs> Fuck, I need it. When do you think I'll get a Jamie? Okay. Yeah, that's going to be the day. Uh, I'm taking, I'm, ta- I'm hiring. <laughs> Assistant chimp. <laughs> That's the best. Assist, Chief Chimp Assistant Chimp. <laughs> What's your job title? AC. What does AC stand for? Assistant Not Chimp. Oh, that's the best. <laughs> Shit. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, how do I find apartment buildings so people want to look it up? I think it was in Flemington. Flemington. Oh, that's right. The Lockdown. You'll find it. So what to Im- describe the image you were saying? No, oh, just an image of the, of the apartments and then there's just police. At the bottom. Oh, I thought you meant on the floor. No. Um, yeah, apparently they're going to be patrolling the floors that you cannot leave. So just to picture people, this is like imagine commission flats. These are not like it's not like a wealthy area. These people like uh, not a high social economic area, right? No, so that's, that's low. Yeah, that's low. That's people who are already struggling, and now you're going to tell them they can't leave. I think it's for five days or something, mm. and you're going to put police on their on their floors. <laughs> I wonder what, like, I'm the guy, I did a fucking, I've, I've spent a ridiculous amount of hours diving into this, especially earlier on when mm. I'm like, what the fuck is this, right? Now I'm more disconnected, but I was on the side of caution. 
heavy caution earlier, mm. proactiveness earlier. Were you buying all the toilet paper? Fuck no. <laughs> I'm, you, know, you know what I'm buying? Water filtration, power supplies. Yeah. So I can stay off the grid when the grid goes off. Mm. Hey. Don't come to my home. <laughs> can still talk chimps. <laughs> yes. Even though no one <laughs> is able to listen. I'll do Because <laughs> all their devices <laughs> will be flat. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll, like, I'll do a radio broadcast. I used to do radio. I'll get on the frequencies. <laughs> One of the first things I tr- before I went on radio, I'm like, how do I st- like how I- before I got uh, like a, as a host, I'm like, as a community radio station, I'm like, how do I start a radio station? That is literally where my mind was. <laughs> you know what? You know when you get into the the Uber and mm. you ask, just have that conversation. Oh, has he not been been busy? What do you do? I had this one Uber driver who was a radio frequency engineer. Whoa! I'm like, how do you make? <laughs> Frequency That just blew my mind <laughs> is, is it in the air? How do you Can you see through like the air? Do you have special glasses? Like how do you engineer it? Like, wow Obviously it's possible Because the Frequency gets used so often Like yes. right now Yes But Just crazy to think about Yeah There's so many people Doing so many different jobs Holding this whole thing together That we have mm. no idea You know how these like Like this This heater is on These yeah. lights go on mm. How does that happen? <laughs> Does anyone ever think yeah. that maybe Edison, the light bulb? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Someone. So I, was, I was just I, when he said Thomas Edison, I was trying. Uh, Nikola, yeah, the fucking Nikola Tesla is the real guy. We got a credit. Do you, uh, do you know about that? And how Thomas Edison? Um, I just know about Edison because I did a project <laughs> in primary school. Well, at least you remember that, Nikola Tesla. Uh, I, d- I do remember my my project. No, yeah, exactly. Yes, it was. Um, yeah, so basically, in, in short, Edison stole Nikola Tesla's, a lot of Nikola Tesla's patents and ide- uh, ideas and then patented them for himself, um, lied to him, ripped him off. I am summarizing mm. a... So Edison's a crook. Well, <laughs> in, in one sentence, I'm, sum- I'm like <laughs> trying to summarize like a whole book of history. Yeah. Uh, there's more to the story that maybe they didn't cover. They don't always cover in school. Mm. Yeah, the library books didn't give me that info. How, how dare they? <laughs> God damn it! Limited sources. Um, where we, we talk? Yeah, we're talking about. So, I'm like, all right. What is the government? Why is the government being our government's uh, state is very conservative, mm. right? Why do you think they're being so conservative? What are they afraid of? And I say that curious, cur- curiously, like. What is it? Is it the overwhelm of the medical system? Even though we now have more PPEs and uh, like med- the hospitals have uh, are relatively calm now, more ICU units than ever, all these great things, mm. which is great. Um, are we worried about deaths? Um, okay. If we are worried about deaths, then the, the major populations we should be all worried about are immunocompromised, older populations. If you have comorbidities, absolutely. So maybe should we then... Um, isolate those populations and then let others make the decisions themselves or can we not leave that to the public because that's a risk systemically mm. okay and that's too much of a risk or is the freedom of the individual keeping the freedom and the autonomy of the individual is that worth that risk and i go back and forth in this I'm like hmm. some people just don't care at the same time, I think that's the big thing. Did you see on, on the news that a guy from Broadmeadows, how they they interviewed him and they said, oh, have you changed your behaviours at all? And he's saying, no, I'm still hugging people and I'm still kissing people. And they said, what if your grandma gets it? And he's like, oh, it is what it is. And he's saying that it only kills old people, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you may be right, the, the mortality rate for the older population is is significantly significantly higher Mm -hmm. but i'd rather my grandma (laughs) still be here absolutely (laughs) like it it, selfish attitudes but yeah it's interesting i think with the for the government perspective it's it would be burden on the healthcare system because they did see like around the world and just the impact that it had on healthcare systems yeah, in, well, other, that was, in other countries. That was is, intimidating. Yeah. And we're so lucky here yes. that we are an island yes. that we don't have that many people 
coming in you can't get someone just walking over from france yes <laughs> like absolutely we're landlocked mm. that is a big benefit and our smaller population we have more land relative to our population. Mm. We have all these. So bonuses. the areas where we are populated are quite dense. That's true. That's very true. So uh, there's there's that thing to, to take into account. Also, I think the the economic collapse like that that's another big thing. Why they want to try and keep us as open as possible. Yeah, exactly. And that that's that's, that's a. I'm glad you brought that up. Like there are correlations between um, economic downturns and suicides and mental illness and. You know the ramifications of that we're seeing now of forced isolation and and and, and mental health ailments. Oh, that's gonna jump again. Like I remember hearing people talking about others that they know that that had um, like committed suicide pretty early on in this year. Yeah. 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 With the whole, no, no one that I knew personally just yeah. um, heard that a friend of a friend of a friend. That, that's what they were, were dealing with and yeah, it's very confronting to think that that someone just can't cope or not it might have just been that final straw yeah exactly usually is so usually is and uh personally uh, knowing people who have been in that state what i think is very grateful i feel is that i we build a very strong mental framework to be able to cope with the trials and tribulations of life you know through meditation through exercise um through reading and understanding philosophy and challenging yourself or through s different ways of self-development and year after year day after day week after week you build this you build this foundation of a really strong mental framework for some people, they may never get exposed to that environmentally or very little and never get the mentors, leadership and empowerment to spark their optimal potential. And some people just start on the back foot. They just start genetically, biologically, environmental, a whole cascade. They just start a little further away from the start line. Okay. And then... Every, all the trials and tribulations that we go through, that may, they may go through similar, it's how they cope with and deal with it is like 5x, 10x, 20x worse, right? Mm. They, they don't have the tools that we've built to cope. And so time after time, it's not that, it's not that the pandemic would have killed them uh, per se, right? It, that could have been an equal, that could have been anything, mm. right? It, it's just, that was it, mm. right? It was that, like year after year, time after time, people, a lot of people are just on the edge. They are teetering on the edge of the mountain, or falling off the cliff or walking away from it and going back inland. And this and the protest and um, with everything going on, th this is like, it's a push for a lot of people over the edge through the, the circumstances. And so makes me, I think us feel grateful for who we are and that, that could easily be us. Mm. Yeah. That, that's a massive thing. Like, like even throughout this whole time, I know that my mental health has been like whoosh, up and down, up and down, up and down, but that's what it always is. Really? For everyone, like we know that you sit, well, you sit on like a spectrum. It is a spectrum. See, so always some days you, you love and life, you're on top of the world, like indestructible, and other days you might feel ah, just for no good reason at all, just yeah. feeling a little bit on the lower side. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, there's obviously like a range of different things that that um, that come into play to to influence that. So even. Even with, with colleagues at work, like some people were, they, they were ready for the change. They, they were fine with it, they were cruising, it was easy. But then at the start, <laughs> it was like this mad scramble for, oh, what are we doing? How are we gonna deliver all this content? Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> all that sort of thing. So we were planning like probably from 
the middle of term one, maybe like a month out That's from good. when we actually did um, get thrown into remote teaching. But yeah, that that was a thinking back on it now. That was a, a very hectic time. There was, was a lot, of, a lot of planning, a lot of video calls, <laughs> a lot of meetings, a lot of messages. A lot of back unpaid in, work. <laughs> yeah, a lot of unpaid work. A lot of back and forth between colleagues. That I'm doing this. Is is this right? Yeah. Like, and just giving people reassurance. Got to adapt. Yeah. Well, maybe it's not unpaid because you wouldn't be teaching, right, in in person. Mm. So it's actually probably balances out a little bit. Uh, Oh, you could probably argue that during the remote learning that because your work hours weren't fixed, yeah. that you do a little bit here, do a little bit at night time, yeah. even though you try and shut off. But I know some people were still <laughs> on their computers doing work until like 10 o'clock because yeah. they weren't comfortable with with yeah. what they were doing. They, they felt like they needed to, to, give to more. do more. And th- those, those are really great teachers like because they're conscientious they care about delivering an excellent service and product and and fuck the product and service relationship connection Mm. with their students which i think i I love and commend those teachers thank you Mm. um but you said you know you've had your moments lows and highs what were the i think for me it's it's never getting too high never getting too low right and i don't get excited very often i look uh, are you excited are you excited for this not really (laughs) <laughs> right i'm look forward to it I lo- i'm looking forward to this conversation <laughs> so i excited no would i be i mean i think there's a there's a spectrum and i try and keep myself in this yeah. tight band yeah right i think it's a byproduct of also of your personality and how you develop blah blah mm. blah right some people are more chaotic that's fine but i think i i trained myself to be that way you know never get too high never get too low you know to stay in this even band of of neutrality so much um and it's not to say you don't experience joy and happiness and excitement (laughs) and pleasure and pain and suffering but you just try and flatten the curve a little bit so your life isn't so up but some people they live on fucking cloud nine and then just the bottom of the pit Mm. every week I'm not saying that was I'm not suggesting that was your experience, but mm. what, what what has been your experience the last couple of months? Because you said no, you know, it's been lows. What's been those triggers? Yeah, well, uh, for me, mine was is probably less actually to do with the virus. Like I mentioned before, my mum and and her health. So she's had some stuff going on, and I'll give you a bit of a backstory into that. So she, um, mum's a single parent, so her and my dad split when I was five, so very, very young. So myself, sister and brother, raised by her. Um, Then I think it was in 2004, she got breast cancer, first time. Um, Went through chemo treatment, da 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 da, into remission. And then in 2012, again, and then went through radiotherapy treatment, da 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 da. So it came back. Yep, came back. Um, and then this year, again, so third time. So that's been the thing that, that kind of, not kind of, definitely rocked me yeah. the most. Um, and I've spoken to, to people about it, but then at the same time, <laughs> every time you rock up somewhere and people are like, how are you going? I'm like, oh, I do, do, I really, yeah. <laughs> do I really have to say it? Yeah. So I just say, Oh, I'm a bit tired, a bit exhausted, blah, blah, blah. You give part of the truth, though. Yeah, I that give part of the truth, but I, I, it's exhausting to, to talk about it. And imagine if I'm just, just rocking up here and someone's like, how you going? And I say, ah, oh. and mum's just been diagnosed with cancer. Yeah. And then I get into this emotional conversation yeah. with them and then I'm not able to train. Yes. So absolutely. when I'm, when I'm going to, to places like this, I'm, I'm probably less likely to... Yes. to talk about it right before I go on a training because you want to stay focused. Yeah. You have a task. That training that's my release. That's yeah. what I'm not trying to escape from it. I still know that that's what's going on. But I want to do my thing. Yeah. And then maybe afterwards if you want to have a chat, we'll have yeah. a chat then. So right now. And <laughs> like when I was doing my my running sessions with with Jordan and he doesn't, I haven't mentioned this to him, but he was one that was saying, hey, feeling, why are you tired? He could see it. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I'd tell he'd also ask like, "How are you feeling?" I just say, oh, "I'm exhausted." It's what we do as a coach. I'm I'm wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> um. And yeah, that that was the reason for it. Just that, that mentally, and then because that was kind of midway through term one of of school or towards the end. Um. So rocking up to work, and then teaching, and then going home, and then mum would have like medical appointments. Yeah. So taking her to her medical appointments, that sort of thing. It's just like just you, you had to you had to help her do that. Yeah, well she doesn't she doesn't drive. Yeah. Um so yeah, didn't really want her catching public transport because yeah. she's got not only is she dealing with that, she's got osteoporosis, which is that's come about from her treatment in the past. Yeah. So um and if I'm available to help, like I'll I'll help her out. You don't want your mum catching the bus yeah. <laughs> to her medical appointment. Yeah. I c- and I remember sitting in the the room with her and the surgeon when he broke the news to her. He he made it out as if it, and I think that's pro- that's probably just part of their job to to just give the information to you straight. Just make it sound as simple as possible. Because he he's, he said to her, uh, "We've got a." little bit of a problem and then mum kind of she already had that that feeling um that something wasn't right because she'd have her, her mammogram and then something came up on that that didn't look right and I think you kind of probably just know within yourself when when something's not right with your body so she probably already felt that and had acknowledged that um and then for him to say that mm, no there is cancer we're gonna have to do a mastectomy um, and then go through the treatment process. Chemo is unlikely because um, obviously you know that chemo, it just attacks like all the, all cells. the cells, Yeah, all the cells. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty brutal. Um, she couldn't have radiotherapy again because once you've had your lifetime dose, then it becomes, um, it, it can cause cancer yeah. if you're exposed to That's too wild. much. She's had a lifetime dose. Yeah. Wow. So she had a lifetime dose like the, the second time around. Um, so now her treatment's involving um, oral medication. Um, and then she'll also have some injections as well. So that's kind of what, what the process is is now. And then... If it gets to a certain point, then chemo might be back on, on the table again. Mm. So, yeah, that's that's been pretty full on. And, and then she obviously went through the, the mastectomy, had that done, um, and was feeling pretty good. Like after the operation, she wasn't in too much pain, too much discomfort. Um, but then, like in with follow ups. They're just going through scanning, 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 saying, is there, is there anything else? Have we missed anything? Da, da, da. And then it's like, oh, no, there's this. And you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> Again. What what else? Like, just just more than what they originally thought. In so, other tissues around the body or something? Yeah. So yeah. It's, it would have been spreading? Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's now just about, like, a, a management sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, but that's that's definitely the thing that's been, like, rock me and then it's like yeah corona <laughs> yeah right <laughs> like still being wary because it's like i can't i i wasn't sure if i'd be able to to still front up and and go to work but then the government um had said or the department of education they're guided by the government it said that well you're only really classified as vulnerable if you're over this age if you um have a compromised immune system yourself um I forget the other. But not if you know somebody who is. Not if you're, yeah. no, or not if you're living with somebody. Live with Am I, are you kidding? <laughs> if I get corona, I go home to my mom yeah. and give that, how is that not factored in? That's a factor. That's a big factor. But I guess we, we, I've just got to keep being, being careful and, um, yeah. and yeah, just sunny up. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, that's tough. Just trying to do the best you can to be proactive. Yeah. Um, how do you, how is she, how is she mentally? Cause some people, they don't respond well m- mentally to that stuff. Some people are like, ah, 
they, they take it better than you think. Oh. Like, she's, she's definitely up, been up, and she's definitely been down. Yeah. I think that's just that way. She was kind of in that review with the, with the surgeon, just like, oh, round three, let's go. Yeah. But you can, but you can tell that it's, it's not something that you want to do. Yeah. It's not something you want to have to go through to know that, um, like your life is on the line, so to speak. So, yeah, she definitely has her good days. She definitely has her not so good days. But she's just a super strong and resilient person anyway. Like from her, as I said before, like raising myself yeah. and my siblings, like a single parent, and then having to go through that the first couple of times as a single wow, parent. Wow, she's doing that. Yeah, like the first time. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> the first time when she was in hospital and, and had the surgery initially we went to my dad's house we were there maybe for like i can't remember how many days but mum had literally just got discharged and he's like back to mum <laughs> like what back to mum <laughs> yeah back to it Take handball us off all right yeah she's just been through this she's gone through this and yeah I'll take care of your family. You can't hang on to us for like two more days. Like, really? <laughs> wait, 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 hang on to us? As in like, we were staying with, I was staying with my dad. Yeah. While mum was in hospital. All right. Because I was what, in grade six. Oh. I was like 12 years old. You, you were... 11 you, years old. Do you have a relationship with your father now or not so much? Nah. nah. You can say, without even going too much detail, it probably makes sense why. Yeah. Like just that. Uh, how do I say parenting style mm. or values mm. hmm. but I'm so grateful for for my mum yeah. and, and what she's done for us and like all the values she's instilled in us and, and how we've grown up to be as individuals like myself and my siblings were all very different yeah. but we've still got those similarities that are reflective of her um, so yeah, I'll, I'll forever be grateful for her and that. Like she's hundred percent my like role model. That's amazing. And I don't know if I've ever told her that directly. You Actually, no, no, I have. I've written it to her, like yeah. in in cards and things. Um, but I probably don't say it to her enough. Maybe she'll watch this one day. <laughs> you know, and I'm sure she'll appreciate and love that from you. Um. How do you manage yourself in that time? You know, everyone goes through those difficulties and heartaches and like, you don't know. Like mm. death is around the corner at any moment for any one of us. Mm. And, and we don't really think about it unless we're thrust into confronting it through mm. these situations. How do you try and keep a focused level head and also give your, your, yourself the space to be emotional and to let yeah. it out. You've got to, you've definitely got to acknowledge the, the emotional side of things because if you don't, then that's just going to snowball into something, something not ideal. Um, I try and keep myself in routine as much as possible because mm. I find that if I don't have routine I don't have structure then things can go out fly the window pretty quickly yeah and same and it's it's happened to to me before where um if I haven't been kept in routine or even at the start of like the or the end of term one, I keep referring to this, but during the, those school holidays that weren't really holidays, I was, the first few days, I was, or not first few, maybe first couple of days, I was just in bed, just lazy, I'm like, oh, I can't be bothered getting out. I'm like, hang on, no, <laughs> I need to start putting things in place. I need to start putting structures in place where I can get myself out of bed, go and do something productive with my day. So... I started writing things on my whiteboard like tomorrow I will nice. have breakfast at this time I will have accumulated this many steps 
by this time and then by this time I'll have accumulated this many more steps and then I'll have lunch so I'd write out my schedule and have it there visually so I'd see that and say yep that's what I'm doing I'm going to stick to that Mm -hmm. um and that and that did help me so that helped kept me accountable uh in recent times but then yeah in the past just just trying to keep myself as busy as possible but then knowing that you still need to talk yeah and um just having a couple of people that that you can bounce off when when you need to is is really helpful and and mum said that to us this time around she said you got to make sure that you've got someone to speak to about this because if you hold it in like it's it builds uh, yeah and she really emphasized this time around again saying that um to talk to her about it Mm. if if you're not feeling well and you kind of it it seems well for me it's like i don't i don't really want you (laughs) to know if i'm struggling or if i'm not coping because then i don't want you to feel burdened that i'm not coping because of what you're going through did you mention that i can't remember if i did no i think i did i've been pretty open with it this time how did she reply to something like that um because that's a very fair point well she's just said you just gotta (laughs) you just gotta do it yeah and like we have had conversations not so much lately because i've been i've been busy with work like when when all this was happening is when things were starting to um die down in terms of like face-to-face hours with with work and whatnot with holidays and stuff where i was there i had i would hang around with her at home go and do my thing come back hang chat Mm. but recently it's been work go to the track do you run go to the gym train come home make dinner pop your head in to a room say hello have a little discussion and then go to bed Mm. so yeah the structure helps yeah structure structure helps me and i think it it helps anyone you helps a lot you, of people you need you need some form of structure and keep christian, talking christian gives me shit <laughs> why <laughs> all the time <laughs> about structure um yeah he says <laughs> he's always said that i'm just so like meticulous and and to the detail like to the letter which are which i am because but those are I, positive qualities yeah, i know those are constructive qualities i know i know but you know what he's like he just yes. likes to, to dig <laughs> yes and i like to dig back and say hey man who could you be what could your potential be if you found that for yourself you know jocko willing discipline equals freedom well people think regimen and structure is constricting and constricts your freedom it actually frees you up it actually creates freedom mm. because you have a routine of what you're going to do where you're going to do it and you, you have set times and days for working on certain things and projects and tasks to get you closer to your goals mm. to who you want to be at the same time you're still going to be adaptable i'm not of course like when i've got things in place like my, my training times they're there i know for me that's when i need to focus but then like i'm i'm generally i'm pretty flexible i'm a pretty relaxed individual i'm I'm happy to go with the flow and and i've i've got to be that way with my job as well like at school pe class right it's raining oh what are we going to do we've got one gym we've got six classes on who's going where who's going in the classroom who's going into we can't even use the weights room at the moment but who's going into the weights room who's doing table tennis da, 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 da. Mm. even though you might have had this plan in your head yeah. you can't be too structured right because yeah. if something goes wrong then we just like you said you just have to be adaptable yeah you can have the best plan in the world but usually the plans don't go to plan mm. you know yeah but i am very structured um generally speaking with with what i know i'm doing i'll, I'll generally have an idea of what i want to do i i like knowing what i'm doing mm-hmm. i like knowing why i'm doing it and then where it's going to take me like I, I want to actually exactly. see improvement yep so yeah there you go that's that's the power of it and it's resourceful for you mm. and it works for you mm. and uh i wanted to ask how, how old was your is your mother she's born in 62 she yeah she's 50, 58 
58. Cool. Um, interesting. Okay. I think that's something that you think about. I mean, when you were younger, you didn't really, probably didn't really feel the effects as much of what was going on, right? 2004, mm. 2012, I think yeah, you said. Yeah, yeah. Four and twelve. It's like now you're an adult. Now you now it's like you gotta you gotta really handle this. You have a responsibility. Yeah, but even still, when when I was when I was younger, like when when the first time around when it happened, um, subconsciously and, and mum's mentioned this as well is that typically because like, I'm I'm the oldest mm. out of three, so you kind of almost take on like this parenting role mm. in a way, or n- not really a parenting role, but you just that that next level of responsibility because what i'm 12 years old my sister's nine my brother's six now no <laughs> back then oh okay <laughs> 2004 oh, sorry 2004 i I'm, missed the first Wait. i'm not 12 years old <laughs> <laughs> i missed the first number i missed the first can you imagine the people listening what did he just say <laughs> She thinks she's 12? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I actually, I just found a car. I got in it. <laughs> I cruised down here. And I became a teacher too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, have shit. you seen, heard about that, um, like that wonder kid, wonder kid who's like completed university who's and this? he's like 10, 11 years old. What I don't know. Name? Um, maybe just Google search. Wonder kid? <laughs> Put on like wonder bread? 10 year old completed university or something. Is this like, in Australia? N- uh, no. I can't remember what country he's from. I want to say Denmark, but I'm probably wrong. Nine-year-old child genius to graduate university. He's not even 10. A child prodigy from Belgium. You can see him in a little photo here. Cross legs, sweater on, button-up shirt. (laughs) Just Um, a typical Euro. (laughs) We're dressing better than both of us. (laughs) Child prodigy from Belgium is on the course to gain a bachelor's degree at the tender age of nine. Lawrence Simmons is studying... Oh, this is the kid. (laughs) They can't hear it, so I'm going to read out loud. <laughs> Lawrence Simmons is studying. Guess what he's studying? Psh. Uh, I don't know. Something sciencey. Electrical engineering. Yeah. Oh, God. He was described by the staff as simply extraordinary. Lon- Lawrence is on his course to finish his degree in December. What are you talking about? <laughs> December? <laughs> Jesus Christ. When was the article written? Was oh, that- true, true. Uh, this was written November 2019, so he is... Last year. He would have graduated. That, uh, his parents, blah, 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 um, were exaggerating when they said he had a gift, but his teachers soon concurred. They noticed something that was very special about Laurent. Laurent was given a test. Test after test, as teachers tried to work out the extent of his talents, they told us he's like a sponge. Uh, neuroplasticity. Oh, she said, I ate a lot of fish during the pregnancy. And th- actually, there is really good evidence to show that omegas, especially omega-3 fatty acids, are really important for brain development. Mm. during pregnancy so for all the women out there for all people who are trying to get pregnant one day you know look up Rhonda Patrick and pregnancy and Amigas and you'll find those resources but really really important um, uh, for brain development uh, so that could be a factor uh, special students that have good reasons for doing so can arrange an adjusted schedule and much the same we can help students who participate in top sports so basically this isn't unusual you know they make exceptions to the rule for people who are uh, Oh, look at this. There's another 10-year-old math genius who's just enrolled in college. African-American woman. All right. Good for him. I'm telling you, the 10-year-olds of 2020 are just well... Like, they're the 20-year-olds of 1990. (laughs) You know? I think it's just going to continue to upgrade. So there's Laurent. Good job, kid. Come on, chimps. (laughs) <laughs> You'd probably be smarter than me saying words I don't understand. What did you just say? Yeah. Can you imagine? He's just like psyching all these scientific studies. Have you found that? I, I know we're diverging, I think, but have you come across any like really, really smart switched on, emo- whether it be emotionally or intellectually? Yeah. Intelligent students? Yeah. Definitely have. Um, emotionally intelligent ones, they're typically the ones that have gone through some shit yeah. themselves and you can see those ones that are just able to, to empathise really easily and then you kind of get a bit of insight into 
what's going on. Um, and then it, it kind of makes sense. But at the same time, you think oh, these kids, some of these kids have had to deal with some, some real shit at such a young age, like losing a parent and they're just coming into high school or they've like already lost a parent in their primary school years. You think, man, that's heavy. Like I'm, I'm lucky to, to still have two parents around, even though I don't have a relationship with one of them, yeah. but that I'm still lucky to have someone present and supportive. Cause some kids, they don't even have support at home. Mm. And you think that's full on for, for someone so young that doesn't really have an idea of everything that's out there. They're still trying to find their way. Um, and then there are little little wunder kids as well <laughs> that that crawl through the the corridors, and you think, <laughs> how are you so smart? Yeah, <laughs> like right. we had this kid, this kid who, who graduated uh, last year, mathematical genius. He did he did like an international competition, and I think he came like 138 in the world. But this is like an open age competition. Oh. I can't remember what it was. Oh, shit. Specifically. You, you teach primary? No, I was secondary. Oh, I'm secondary. secondary. Oh. Yeah. The high school kids. Um, but yeah, and he had done, I don't know how many times he'd done further maths, maybe like two or three times. And got like a perfect 50 in it. Got a 50 in methods. Got a f study score of 50 in specialist maths. How old was he when he did? Okay. This is when he was in year 12. Okay. But he did further maths, like unit three and four. He must have done it when he was in year 11 and when he was in year 10, cause they would have just given it to him. This kid then. just intellectually just on the ball. Yeah. Next level. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he was ducks. Um, What's that? For those who top, top ATAR score. In Australia. Top ATAR score well, for people at, like at, me. at the school. Okay. At the school. So he was, uh, he got. There's only one ducks, right? Yeah. Unless you get the same score, then you get two ducks. <laughs> couple of quacks <laughs> <laughs> king duck queen duck <laughs> but yeah, and and we have at at the start of the school year we have an assembly where you get the, the kids in from last year like the the top performers um to acknowledge what they've done like in the work that they've put in and kind of showcase it to the rest of the school um and it's crazy to think like, wow, <laughs> you've dedicated so much time to this. Like what, what are you saying? Like just- Projects they're working on? No, no, no. So, so from, from, a, from the, yeah, from the, the score from the year before. So the ATAR score, you know how you get your, su your study scores for each, mm -hmm. each subject, like kids that have gotten perfect 50s, mm. which is so hard to achieve. How do you actually need to do that? I don't even know. You just need to, you pretty much don't need to, like can't drop a mark in any assessment. Jesus. Do you know how flawless you have to be? That's what I mean. That's like you how can't miss a shot. Yeah, exactly. You gotta hit on goal every time. Every single 99%. time. 99%. Yeah, pretty much. Jesus. I don't know, like it, it changes each year because of the bell curve. Um, Fuck. But yeah, just that, just thinking of that, like wow, you, you are like the best in the state at this point in time at that. What, okay, two things. Like, how, what do you attribute creates those types of people well, that's the first thing uh, what characteristics obviously the, just the, the value of education but also um, just their commitment to their study and I'm I, for me I'm not super focused on saying that everybody needs to, to get these, these scores but it's awesome to acknowledge the work that those kids have put into to get that but then at the same time like for for a kid that that may have been struggling at the start of the year and for them to to grow and maybe to achieve like a, a 25 in a subject for them where maybe they were predicted to to not even get that high or to not even reach like a 30 like that just improvement yes but that is like progression that's like just that top level the elite it's like i don't know the Olympics of high school. <laughs> like you got your gold medalist. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that's. So the commitment, 
the uh, priority of education probably comes from the parents. Mm. And then you have the kids who parents just died, abusive homes, mm. um, low socioeconomic areas, just poor environment. How receptive are they to teachers like yourself? Like, how much do you really think you can mold them? As some, like you, you're like you're trying to like unlock for some of them. They're very guarded. They're very resistive. Mm. You know, they got traumas. Mm. How do you find a way to help unlock them? I think I'm pretty lucky within my subject areas because PA majority of the kids enjoy it and just you know that being active yeah. it correlates with improvements in, in mental health yeah for sure and, and feeling feeling good um you do get a couple of kids that just hate it <laughs> that they just hate p or they won't really i try i try to get them to, to not sit yeah. on the sides that's good you always want to get them involved in in some capacity even if it's as simple as I, can you time this game? Yeah. Um, so that is a benefit. I guess the sense that, that, that they generally enjoy the subject. Um, and then for the health side of things, it's in our curriculum where we can discuss things like mental health and well-being. That's amazing. So, and what I did um, last year was, and I think Brick spoke about this, how I got him onto the Resilience Project, reading that book. Um, and you said your yeah. girlfriend has started yeah, reading it. Has, right. she fin- has she finished it? Um, no, I have to report back. Yeah. I'll let you know. But uh, it's it's definitely a good read. Um, so there was a, a video that, that a, from the Resilience Project, from Hugh Van Kylenberg, so he's, he's the guy that, that created the Resilience Project. Um, so there was a video up on YouTube of him talking it was an excerpt from one of his his talks about 20 minutes he's telling a few stories based around gratitude empathy and mindfulness so i found that video showed it to year eights in the health class said we're going to do this i want to see if you can i'm going to challenge you to do gratitude which brought down three things to grateful for every single day for the next two weeks awesome some of them did it and you could tell that all actually they were all pretty motivated straight after watching that clip and from what he was talking about and Did the they do examples it immediately there? that he showed yeah i got them to to write down three things that they were grateful for that had happened um during that day nice. so far and it was a pretty rainy day and i remember like walking around the classroom looking at what some of the kids have written some have been like i'm grateful for my mom and for her giving me a lift to school because it was raining today mm. little things like that <laughs> there were other kids that like hated the, the idea of it because they thought it was like a chore and it was kind of forced upon them. Like, okay, I can see the, their side of view, their point of view of that because um, I guess if you, if you can't really tap into... The feeling. Yeah. yeah. Or if you haven't been through something that's kind of shaken you up a bit, you, you're going to say, like, why? why do I need to write down these things things are fine whereas if you've been through you've gone through a little bit of shit and you start thinking eh, I'm grateful for this I'm gra-. those kinds of people they I noticed that those kids they were the ones that that did it more consistently yeah that's interesting wow interesting that the, the kids who have gone through some shit had traumas had troubled pasts you found they did the gratitude practice more consistently probably because they found something it, res- it was resourceful to them. Mm. They found benefit. Yeah. I'm not saying that those kids that that weren't on board so much with it last year wouldn't be on onto it now. Mm. Um, yeah. Interesting. But I've set the task again to <laughs> my year 11s. Well, that's, don't say year 11 because I've got year 10s in that class. In my VC class, my year 9s and my year 7s. I'm interested to see how many of the year 7s actually do it because they're so young. Well, like we saw with our child geniuses, mm. age sometimes doesn't matter as much. Mm. But just from the perspective that... They haven't gone through as much, maybe? Yeah. 
I'm not saying that they haven't. Yeah. But it's but a possibility, just or, they or that they have less time to go through. Or things. they just don't have that um, level of emotional yeah, intelligence just yet. True. They yeah. can't really. They don't really know yet how to empathize. Yeah. Test it. Yeah. That's so. That's what I said. I said this is your your holiday homework, and then one's like, do you, do we really have to do this? I'm like, do we? So you're asking me. Do we really have to think about the good things that have happened throughout my day and acknowledge them? You're telling me you don't want to do that? <laughs> you don't want to tell me what you're grateful for, what makes you feel good? That's such <laughs> a good way to put I'm it. Like, sorry? <laughs> just just think about the words that are coming out of your mouth yeah, for a second. Yeah. Think about the words that just came out of my mouth. Yeah. And That's then report back to me. Did you get a reply or was that like, okay? It was just kind of a bit like little nod and then yeah, we'll move on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Wow. But um, great, fuck yeah! But we'll see if, if we'll see if they remembered. I haven't, I haven't reached out to them too much. Earlier this week, I said, "Don't forget about your gratitude journals." Da da da. So I might send them a, another message tomorrow, and say, "Don't forget your journals. It's the only holiday t- homework you've got." <laughs> it's interesting you say that because when I spoke to to Jordan Potts, um, he we spoke about that. Oh, we spoke about it at some point and he inspired me to and I was actually on my other podcast with Orphic Education and he inspired me to he does that with his kids that he coaches mm. um, he makes challenges for them as well it's like just see what happens you know it's like oh why do I have to do this oh what if you did just mm. what if you did like what could happen just try mm. just see just what happens get rid of the hypothetical just, just do it yeah and that inspired me to start doing it. And I've been doing it for about the last, feels like about a month or, or in a bit. And it's the first thing, one of the first things I do when I wake up. I go to my journal and I write three points. Mm. And it really, it, 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 it has a strong mental anchor. Oh, it does, 100%. Like, and when you do it in the morning and you have a routine that helps anchor you and gratitude is part of that movement is part of that mindfulness and meditation is part of that mm. getting outside in the sun is part of that it's like no matter what else happens that day you are so much more primed to deal with the adversities of life yeah just those daily affirmations like i am yes exactly you do do you do that i don't do I'm it in, i don't do it in the, in the mornings i i reflect on the day i prefer to yep. before i go to sleep yeah just so it's great it helps me go to sleep um, a bit better but I know that one of my colleagues he gets up in the morning he does daily affirmations he'll do like a little meditation mm-hmm. and then we'll roll into work nice um, it's really just w- whatever works for you absolutely um, but like with anything so I was doing the, the three things that are, or not necessarily it was one thing one good thing that has happened to you today or the, what's the best thing that's happened to you today second thing was who are you most grateful for today and why and the third what are you looking forward to most about tomorrow so that's what I was doing and I did that for maybe like almost 300 days consecutively I didn't miss a day mm. and then I can't remember why I stopped I, I must have just I just kind of fell off the bandwagon like with anything that you do if you do it enough sometimes it, it kind of starts to lose its effect. I'm like, right, I'll just stop doing it for a while because then I, I was feeling like I was becoming too repetitive. With, becoming a chore? With, yeah, it started to become a little bit chore-like. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I changed it so that rather than just writing all these things down, just being present. And, and Hugh speaks about this because he had, there was this kid, he went and taught in remote India. Um, What's this? I'm about to explain. Oh, okay. Yeah. So went and taught in remote India and there was a kid named Stunzen and he couldn't pronounce the TH. So he would say this instead of uh-huh. this. And he said that at multiple points throughout the day, Stunzen, he would be sitting with his friends. This kid, I think he was in grade three, um, would be sitting with his friends and he go, sir, sir, dis. And we'll point to his friends. I'll say dis person, dis person, dis person. And he was in that moment acknowledging that that was good. Or, and he's got another little story where we're stunned and he's cut the toes off his shoes because he's had those shoes since he was in prep. The toes? Yeah, like the ends or the ends of his shoes. Okay. 
like so his toes can hang out yeah because the shoes are too small oh but he puts his shoes on before he goes outside and he's like sir this or he's got a hat on this like grateful for those things that he oh. has um so i started adopting that into my day-to-day when i wasn't doing the the gratitude at night i was just th- i wasn't <laughs> just standing there going hey this <laughs> <laughs> but you were thinking about in, it. in my head i was going yeah ah. this moment what that person just said what that person just did huh and um i maybe like a few days ago i started getting back on track onto doing like the the daily gratitude and just acknowledging and i got my mum onto it as well and in our family group chat every day she'll send through hers Beautiful. and we'll send through ours That's so good actually it's just me and her my brother and sister <laughs> they they haven't gone on board with it i'm like come on just do it <laughs> just this just give it a go exactly um but yeah and that that definitely does have it's so powerful just to acknowledge the good things that are going on throughout your day because you might have had <sighs> yeah a seemingly pretty average day yeah. but then there's just that one thing that that yeah. someone did yeah like oh someone held the door open yeah or they smiled at you when you walked yeah. through the street yeah it's nice yeah or well, for me like what happens like just kids at school saying hello yeah. as you're walking past yeah. or stopping and having a chat nice like those sort of things those sort of little moments um and just knowing or just acknowledging that that they're the good things that are going on it it, it makes you that average day just a bit better absolutely you know that ah, there is good in every single day there is you've just got to look for it yeah. and it might be so small and so subtle on some days and then others it's just like wow this day was awesome but there's always going to be something something that's there's always a little win you just got to find the little win in each day it reminds me it's like find a little win in each day it reminds me i i was listening to a podcast of a holocaust survivor um and a credible story on joko willink's podcast it's like four hours of just heavy Mm. just heavy experiences that she was telling and retelling in her, I think, a book or her brother's book, family member's book. Um, the point is, how would, it makes me think, how would someone like that be able to find that, right? It's the worst mm. possible environment in a concentration camp. You are starving, you are hungry, you are cold, you are beaten, you're... you're, you're your fa- you just saw your father get taken off to be died. Um, you, you, you're seeing people die every day, shot. You, you're getting your hair shaven off your body to uh, uh, dehumanize you and make you just all the same. Time after time, just constant um, pain. And she made a comment. It's like, what kept me alive, and I'm paraphrasing, what kept me alive was I could never take away my hope. Mm my hope inside that that things could get better mm. and that things could change and i think that hope ties into this gratitude yeah 100 percent. So that's what it reminds me of and, it, and it, i think all right what if that was me where could i find hope because everything nothing lasts no nothing the sun will one day explode implode whatever you want to technically call it earth will one day be gone or just a shell of what it once used to be everybody you know and love and ever met is gonna die i've said this before Mm. i will keep saying it because people don't think about it yeah and i'm gonna force it down your throat until you i shouldn't say like that i'm gonna remind people of it as i remind myself daily of it and so i say that there's a finality to to life but that's also that finality that temporary nature of it Mm helps foster our gratitude mm, just to make the most yeah. of what you've got and appreciate what you've got like it's all relative you can't go saying like and hugh has said this it when you are reflecting when you are being grateful it's not necessarily saying that i'm grateful for having a roof over my head because i've always had that roof over my head so what I need to be grateful for is yes I, I'm still appreciative of that but you need to be more you need to be grateful for things that are, are relative 
to you yeah. and, and your situation yeah. and what's going on with you. For sure. Um, Makes it more powerful. Yeah. If I'm just saying, oh, I'm grateful for... for Air having, I breathe. Yeah. Well, is Does that really... Are you going to connect with that? Yeah. As much really as if you, you say that um, I'm grateful for... Um, like my mom and for, for having a conversation with her, just having a laugh with her yesterday. Yeah. Like, about whatever. Yeah. Like, you connect more with that than, oh, I'm grateful for the air Absolutely. that I breathe. Like, yes, still be grateful for it, still yeah. acknowledge that. That's yeah. obviously important because if you're not breathing. Algae. <laughs> yeah, grateful for the seaweed. Seaweed. <laughs> um, yeah, it's all, it's all going to be relative. And that's a great uh, little tip or technique and to making gratitude practices more sustainable and more impactful is making them very personal. Because mm. um, that's how you connect. Exactly. It's a great point. Yeah. And, and I think this, and I've brought it up before in this podcast, but uh, speaking to Jeremy, I remember it's like this time, it's like, you know, we're fortunate that we can look out this window and, and the city's not on fire. Yeah. That there's not violent protests in the street, that we're not a city that, is getting overwhelmed by thousands of cases of, of, of a virus um, where, where police brutality isn't as uh, rampant. Um, gun laws are way different. You know, there is relatively, it appears to be, and in comparison, statistically, more peace. Mm. And living in Melbourne, Australia, and this country, it's like that. When I see what happens around this world... I feel very grateful to be in such an amazing place. Yes, it has its shortcomings, but shit. Not many other places that probably top it. Mm. Just it, and I do think about that sometimes. Like, imagine if you were born somewhere else, like in another South country. South Africa. How different would your life be? Yes. Like would I still be, would teaching be the career path that I took? Would, like my sport, what opportunities yeah. would I have had over there? Exactly. Yeah. Makes you think. Mm. Um, speaking of your sport, that's, that's uh, actually, do you have any stories from your, your grandparents have told you about growing up in South Africa? I didn't meet those ones. They mm. were gone before. Damn. I met them. How, how do you how do you reconnect to that history? <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. I think. It's um, yeah, I don't know too much about that side of my family. Like I've got cousins who lived over there and then since moved over to Australia. Um, but yeah, I haven't really. I haven't really inquired. Is this... Wait, so I'm... Mother's side? Dad's South African. And that's Tula. Ch- Tula's Greek. Oh, your mother's name's Tula? Yeah. Or oh, Demetra, they, but Tula's like... That, a, that's... Yes, that is a very Greek name. name. <laughs> yeah, I'll remember that now. Yeah. Um, and that's... Look, the, that's the difficult part that um, you're not really in contact with your father, but your father's has connections to these roots of your history that you may feel one way or another about. Um, but I, to share that you know when my grandparents came over i was more connected to my um my egyptian grandparents mm. uh because they lived closer they lived just a suburb away we saw them you know pretty much every week and it was great however when i was younger and they'd come over i would say hello you know we'd speak briefly and i'd go do off on my own thing i just ah oh, I, I, whatever i'd be doing you mm. know basketball video games homework whatever shit tv shows um and later on, when I was about 18, 19-ish, I had a realization. I'm like, these people aren't going to last forever. Mm. And uh, they, but they have such a rich history. And hearing stories from my grandparents on both sides, you know, talk about um, how my, I think it was my great-grandfather or some, someone in, in that, on, my, on the Greek side, he would help during the war. Uh, I think Turkey and Greece, mm. um, he would, well, maybe it was my grandfather. He would help, he would have a boat and he would help transport people across 
this uh, from one island to the next. Mm. And when there, whoever was invading, um, one time he nearly got shot. And something happened where I'm paraphrasing where he, he nearly got shot on the boat. It was in, it was darkness or whatever it was. And it like it like hit his hat or something. Right. He did just close. Yeah. Right. And she's telling me this story. And, and I, I, I think I tried to audio record these stories. And I think um, we are nothing without our ancestors, regardless of the the feelings we may have towards one person or the next mm. that doesn't cast the people above them to be bad. No. Right. And I guess it just highlights the fact that if w- one thing I wish I knew when I was younger is I wish I had the will and the interest and the realization to be more present when my grandparents and ancestors and to hang out with them more. Now when they co- now when I see them, I'm fully present. Mm. I'm there a hundred percent. Everything else has moved to off. I don't give a fuck what else is going on. Mm. And um, I, I think. I mean, we're not that big of a difference in age, but it's something I would encourage you, Amy. Mm. Like, I can't say make make reconciliation with your father. It's a very personal thing. Mm. That's, I can't ever tell you to do that. But all I can say is with the relatives you are comfortable with communicating to, just chase your curiosity. Dive in. You're going to find some crazy things out yeah, about history. I know. Mm. Yeah, I definitely am curious and have been in the past. But um, yeah, I've got that, like I said, more more connected to my yeah. mum's side of the family, so I, I know a bit about the, the going great. on, the goings on, and the happenings over there. And mum still knows a bit about um, what's going on with my dad's side. Okay. Of the family, so nice. like I've, I've still you got can hear like, things from her. yeah, a little bit of insight Good. into it, um, but then yeah, at the same time, it's probably somewhere where I just need to go myself and like go over to South yes. Africa and go and travel because I I won't have any issues with with going over there and yeah. and connecting with family over yeah, there like that's exactly. fine I'm sweet with that yeah um, yeah and that but th- that's a that's a timeline because you'll have relatives that. Mm. Um, are older like I do mm. uh, like I, w- I was I named um, Strength of Sight after a grandfather yeah, grandpa, I remember right that. you say Papu we called him Papu for some reason but it's really Gedo Gedo is, a, is Arabic for, for uh, grandfather mm. uh, but we called him Papu because we'd cross pollinate because it'd be, yeah. it'd be Greek and Egyptian African and European um, and he has like I don't know about your family. Do they have a lot of siblings? Like, do your do your parents have a lot of siblings? Your grandparents have a lot of siblings? Um, no, no, not. And you think about like the typical Greek family. The, there's like thirteen siblings. The family's huge. Yeah. Mine isn't super yeah. huge. Neither is mine. Just a few, like maximum four. Yeah. But well, with my grandfather, he had like a fucking. Uh, my grandfather had. Um, I shouldn't swear and say my grandfather in the same <laughs> sentence that doesn't feel right um but they're just words <laughs> not to them <laughs> yeah i guess alex yes <laughs> alexander yes <laughs> yes uh, my my grandfather he would uh, he had like eight nine siblings mm. um, big family and but he still has relative he still has he's no longer here but um his brothers and sisters only one sister is here that i recently met which was amazing mm. um uh and then he has a brother, only one other brother uh, in Egypt and a couple of other sisters. And when I learned that over the years, I'm like, man, i got to get there. Oh, I was supposed to go to Egypt this year. You were. That's right. Oh, it's the photos yeah. with, the, with the thing. <laughs> yeah. You pretended like you're in Egypt. <laughs> <The furniture. laughs> what? What? Yeah. Yeah. I was supposed to go to Dubai and Egypt with some oh, friends. Oh, damn. I feel like... It wasn't a long trip because of um, obviously time constraints with work and my friends and their, their uni studies. But, yeah. I was ready to go and see the pyramids. I was wow. ready to go and look at Tutankhamun's toes hanging out of the top of... <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> well, how long did you plan to go there for? Uh, it wasn't very long. Like two and a half weeks, something like that. Yeah. Um, like a nine-day tour. 
through Egypt, which I, I'm generally I'm very opposed to spending such a short amount of time in a place because you kind of want to explore it properly. Yeah. But given that like sometimes you just got to do things. Yeah. Oh, well, even though didn't end up <laughs> didn't end up doing it. When was it supposed to be? It was supposed to be in April. <sighs> no. Yeah. <laughs> that's the heat of it. Yeah. March April. That's the heat of it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's supposed to leave. <sighs> when was it? Oh, I can't remember. Early, early, mid-April. Man. Early April, actually, and it's supposed to get what back. What drew you like, to 18th. going to those countries? Ah, oh. Egypt is is incredible. There's so much history. Yes, that's why I connect it. so deeply with it. Greeks, Greece too. Yeah. I feel so unbelievably privileged. Like I could fucking cry how privileged that I feel. Like having such a rich history from those countries, and like. I didn't get to pick who I fucking was. Yeah. I just am. You didn't yeah. get to pick. No. But you're in a similar situation. It just happened. Oh, <laughs> and even though mum was kind of naughty, like you're not supposed to, as as a, a Greek woman, oh, you're not right. supposed to, With yeah, other, other Greeks and Greeks. Yeah. <laughs> Greeks and Greeks. Wow. Greek and South Africa. What, what is How'd going on? How did you get on? over there? <laughs> yeah. And like not even married. They they never even got married. They, I think really? parents, they got engaged and then they separated. So wow. that was like another no-no. And then to have three kids, <laughs> not married yeah. to someone that is not Greek. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> it's going to cause some problems <laughs> in the families. Yeah. But um, no, nah, Egypt, like the pyramids, man. <laughs> yeah. Come on. They don't even know how they really built that. And if using like the sky. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, for, oh to, with the stars that align yeah. with the pyramids? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Let me look that Like up. that just blows my mind. I, and I still want to get over there. I still want to see you will. that. I know I will. It's just a matter of time. We only just got our refunds back. Well, we still haven't actually physically got the refunds. But they processed it. Yeah, well, we were in like this long battle with um, the tour company, Intrepid, but we got you. <laughs> we <laughs> Shout got you. out. They wanted to <laughs> to hold on to 15% unrecoverable costs. We're like, can you give us an itemized list? No. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> so you wanted to see what the unrecoverable costs were? Yeah. In order, what, what would validate them taking 15% of our dollary dues? And you just... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and they couldn't do it so you just got the refund eventually well, after hitting it, them hard yeah it was like literally it only just happened this week where they hit back and said yeah we'll give you a refund based on compassionate grounds because um, one of my friends she did a lot of the legwork with the emails with them that's going good. back and forth with, with the company like you get that the company's like they're struggling but what's well, like what, ten thousand dollars or something isn't it i don't know five to ten grand what are you paying Oh, for the tour, no, it was just purely for the tour. So that was probably like a couple of grand. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so we obviously wanted that money back. Initially, they were just offering credit. So, like, you can't guarantee us that you're still going to be operating in like, Great this point. time next year. And we don't even know if we can travel next year. Yeah, or really the year after. If you're only offering oh. this credit till then, we're like, nope, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> give us our money. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But, um, but yeah, Appar that, that aside. That aside, the ancient Egyptian pyramids on the Giza Plateau was by design correlated with the relative positions of the three stars of the constellation of... Oh, no, I can't remember. Orion. Was Orion? Ah. Oh, had you, you had it. Had that in my head. Oh. I didn't want to be wrong. Sometimes you just got to be wrong. Right? It's like it's the kids you teach the kids. It's like what they, yeah, they don't put up their hand. You stand there like, come on, give me something. And everyone's like... Mm. I, I, you know <laughs> what I do with my students when I teach? I teach like it's grown adults, but the principle applies. I think it actually gets worse, where it's maybe primary kids, they're really enthusiastic and passionate. And yeah, they'll we, just throw whatever out. Yeah. And you're like, great point, you're close, but... <laughs> but we blunt in that. Society bluntens it. Be quiet, sit in the corner. You know, parents, abuse, trauma, blah, blah, blah. Conditioning. Don't put your hand up. You don't want to look wrong, mm. et cetera, et cetera. And I see that in the adults that I teach with the Cert 3 and 4. And so, I'll, you know, I'll just do. Yep. I'm just, I'll, just, I'll just be quiet. Um, because you have, I have a tendency, people have a tendency to fill the space. Mm. Nobody likes awkward silence. No, so I'm going to say, hey, and I tell them, um, this is not, I'm not really a typical Teacher. Different kind of chimp. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm going to swear, I'm not really, I'm not always politically, I'm not always politically correct. I challenge ideas. I'm going to challenge you. 
we're going to go off topic. We're not always going to stick to the curriculum. That's why I think maybe if I was... Like, you gave the example of uh, the gratitude, the kids who didn't want to do the gratitude potentially because they haven't gone through some stuff. Mm. You know what made me think? That made me think, all right, let's go through some stuff right now. And I thought, okay, how can they go through some stuff immediately that would make them feel grateful? Well, let's light a candle. Put your finger on the candle. Hold it until you can't hold it no more. You're going to feel pretty grateful for not having a burnt finger. It's like, that's, that's, it's like, it's unconventional. Like, I reckon I'd lose my job if yes, I told them to do that. Exactly. <laughs> that is why I probably wouldn't work in a government system. <laughs> I got to own the company or be a part of the company <laughs> to do that shit. Because <laughs> I can get away with it. Not that I'm burning people's fingers. It's all voluntary. Um, I don't know how we went from that, from the pyramids to that. <laughs> yeah, me either. But the image is pretty cool and pretty amazing where you can see the stars just above the, the, the points of the pyramid, um, the Orion's belt. And there is a podcast I'm going to send you by some Egyptologists and archaeologists uh, on Rogan, two of them. One of them who are really considering doing... He runs tours to mm. Egypt, but like historical tours, like really high Maybe level. we'll book in with him next time if he... Oh, if you're <laughs> instead inter- of this it's other more company. expensive, yeah. but it is... Once I heard it on the podcast, I'm like, all right, I got to do this. Yeah. This is done. I'll it's one of, the, one of the wonders of the world. You got to... Yeah. And then I've, vis- I, and I've visualized time and time again going there. And I, I, it's, it's going to be an emotional just powerful moment i think especially for you because you've got that connection mm. through your ancestry yeah that's a powerful thing um but and i had this we, we were you know what was interesting my family and my relatives that we've recently connected with egyptian relatives living here mm. we were planning in early planning stages to go to greece and egypt later this year obviously <laughs> Not anymore. But going with family who, and I was, I was, I, got, I, th- I made a thing to myself where I, I want to learn, I need to learn Arabic first. That's mm. going to be my reward to myself. I'm going to earn it. Right. Now I spoke to some of the, my relatives here and they're like, well, auntie, my mother, it's like, uh, okay, you can do that, but you might miss out on the opportunity if you do that or you don't feel like you have to do that and so they kind of it almost gave me permission by if i go with my family i can just enjoy the experience the once in a lifetime experience with them with relatives and uh, i can still learn it mm. uh but another part of my brain's like no man be fluent in it get yeah it, get it down pat yeah be good and then i'll be able to converse not get taken advantage of you know there's there's uh oh, sorry keep going oh no that's that's it yeah that's I was going to say, one of my work colleagues, um, he and his wife went to Egypt, I don't know how many years ago, but he told me a story about how they were just in the streets, I think that maybe like going through a market. Yeah. And then someone, <laughs> they got more than ripped off. <laughs> this guy's like, ah, come down here with us. They go into like this dungeon-y place. Yeah. And then, like, locked in there. What? <laughs> and then this guy's trying to sell them these products. I can't remember what it was. Maybe, like, a scuff or something. Yeah. Um, like, and trying to extort them a bit by obviously jacking the price up and say, you buy this. And they'll say, no, no. And what do you mean? You don't want to buy this. And then it's starting to get a little bit aggressive. And then oh. I think they eventually, like, just caved in and, like, paid it and whatever. And then out they went. But yeah. I'm like... <laughs> It's definitely an advantage to not yeah. appear as a tourist. Yes. And um, with our planning, that's that's something that, that we were having to factor in, especially as being a group of females. Like, what are we going to wear yep. when we're over there? Um, and the fact that like, if you don't have a ring on your finger, that people, that males are going to come up to you and try and and talk to you and and yep. caught you mm. would be the 
I'm like, that's full on. Correct word. Yeah, I'm like that. That's full on. Yeah, <laughs> like I here mean, you can just walk around, but then over there. Yeah, you you. I mean, it's you got to uh, be covered. You got to. Yeah, because it's a respect thing. There's there's the Muslim culture and there's the Christian mm. culture there. It's a whole mix. Um, you got to be intelligent about the way you go about it. Learn the customs. Do your research, uh, because at the end of the day, that is their home, mm. right? And I think as tourists, as foreigners. Even though, yeah, I'm born here, but, you know, I'm still uh, technically a foreigner. Um, I believe we should all respect that. 100%. Even though... Well, before I say that, like, I actually... my I have some clothes from my grandfather, a lot of clothes from my grandfather. He was a tailor, but um, the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to... Here's the, something called a tarbush. Tarbush mm-hmm. is a little... Uh, it's like a hat that you wear. Um, that you'll see, like you'll you have the gown, mm. and you have the tarbush, and um, I think that'll help me blend in if I if I rock the whole <laughs> outfit, you know. You'd be legit. You know, set what? up your own little market stall. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And then I speak Arabic. Oh, I'm a run that place. And <laughs> make some falafel and woo, cook. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh yeah, falafels. My my grandmother made falafels fresh. Oh. She make grapes, grapevine leaves, and rice and meat in them. She made koshiri. So I'm like, what the fuck? There's like so many great foods. So Do you have like so a... F- good. Well, actually, I, so many places. Such a chimp. <laughs> 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 the, th- the, the country thing. That's a weird thing. Like if, you, if you're an astronaut, you look out the planet and you just zoom out. <laughs> right? It's all just water and land. Yeah. And we decide where the lines are. This, this piece of land is called this. Mm. It's a strange thing. It's like you're over in this piece of land. My piece of land is better than your piece of land. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to call it this. And I'm just like, it just makes me think. It's like we're all we're all citizens of the same planet, yet we separate ourselves so much. And we all speak different languages. Yes. We've got wow, so many languages. That's crazy. Yeah. Where are we going to? I feel like. Uh, where was the my other chimp mind going? Um. I was going somewhere else. Something about falafel and cooking. Yeah, what's do you have a favorite food that your grandparents have cooked? Or parents, sorry. Um pasticho. That was my oh. favorite like dinner. Shout out to pasticho. So good. And um dessert, yellow to Oh. My dad has gone into cooking. He just cooked that the yeah. other week. How good is it? So sweet. It's got the cinnamon <laughs> on top. Yeah. Damn. And like semolina and the the syrup. I think. Yeah, Christian's coming up now. You're watching Talking Chimps with Alexander Emanuel and Amy Melander, the best in the biz. Check it out. A positive that came out of that interruption is now we have we got the T Rex. Another guest, and for those just listening, we have a toy T Rex sitting on the table, a nice little decor. So I like that. <laughs> <sighs> Where were we? <laughs> we were talking about... Um, Good food. Food, yes. Now, what uh, it's interesting that we're, we come from similar situations um, where half your family's from Europe and Greece, half your family's from Africa, South Africa, mm. mine's the opposite side um, in Egypt. Yeah, you're up north. Exactly. In the north. North side, south side. <laughs> now, I feel like... It leaves you, and you were born here. Mm. So we're in very similar situations. And for me, and I've said this mostly privately, I don't think I've really said it much publicly, that I don't... I, we, we sit in the middle, or at least I feel like I sit in the middle, especially on, around all these, what's going on around the world, like mm. Black Lives Matter, um, protests, police brutality. It's like, who am I? Mm. Am I... Am I black? Am I white? Am I brown? What the hell does that mean? Am I in the middle? You know, I used to run a, a, a media company called Jungle Beats where we would, we'd review music. Mm. People would refer to me as the black guy. They'd call me yeah, I can, it, the N-word. It got me thinking about moments throughout my life where I'd experience similar things. Huh. So, you're like, oh. where do you... How do you think about that? Where do you sit? 
How do you identify it? Not that you have to. Yeah, not that you have pick. to, but obviously, but I wonder. Like being still identify as being like a person of color, and I think it'd be not rude of me to to not acknowledge that part of my heritage, but even just like mm, looking, like I'm not white. <laughs> mm. Um, so yeah. And it did get me thinking like throughout at different moments throughout my life. And I spoke about this with a couple of friends. Um, and mum being of Greek descent, um, we don't have the, the same skin color. And yeah. like, it, it got me thinking about times where like, <laughs> just simple situations like going to the shops, waiting at the deli, standing next to mum or near her. And then the person then asking me, oh, can I help you? I'm like, no. I'm with her. Huh. Like just little things like that. And um, even growing up, like again, because of the Greek background, did you ever go to to church, like around Greek Easter? That would be the only time that we'd go to church mm-hmm. would be around yep, I've done Greek that Easter. Yeah. Um, and then going there <laughs> and all the little Greek ladies <laughs> looking at you like... Yeah. 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 It'd be a Not necessarily like a, in a bad way. But just like... But it just... Who are you? What are you doing here? They're looking. Just curious. Yeah, curious. Like, huh. Um, and then like what you said before about being called the N-word. Like I remember in primary school, these two boys, I was in grade six, they would say like, you're a... Mm. And then I remember getting so fired up and so angry, but then they just pretty much begged me to like not tell the teacher. And I, I caved to that, like 2v1. Yeah. Like I, I just kind of... I just let it go, but I, I just remember feeling like such intense anger towards because they were like they they were bullying me like yeah. for that for for being different. Um, yeah, and then even <laughs> one season of soccer, my nickname it was just when I'd started playing like senior level. I was like sixteen. Um, I got called token. Like it was uh, as just as a as a nickname. Yeah. Like not not. There was no malice behind it. It was just a nickname, but yeah. then like, but it was because of my color. Yeah. So yeah, all that that stuff. It it did make me think and reflect on all that and just how huh yeah, we can probably change things to, we can probably do better, and be better. Absolutely. Um, so yeah. It's, it's a, it's a, it's not a funny thing. It's a, it's an interesting thing where it's. Do you uh, do you identify more with one than the other, or do you feel like you sit in the middle, or neither? Maybe maybe none of the above is the option too. I feel like. Cause I feel like I sit in the middle, and that helps me be maybe a little more. Unbiased, I'd hope. Mm. You know. I, I do feel like I sit in the middle because I do have, um, there's that presence from my mum's side of the family. So I've got that, but then I'm also still, like my last name is South African. Mm. And obviously do, like my complexion is from the South African side. Mm. So I, I guess I, I am in the middle. But here's the thing, like Aborig- uh, native Aboriginals of Australia, they can be white skinned, mm. right? Um, but then that kind of delves into a whole like messed up thing with like the stolen generation. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Did you? Did you? I went to Melbourne Museum um, when they had their Aboriginal uh, beautiful exhibit uh, where they demonstrated the history, and it was really interesting. Have you seen that? Did you go to that? No, no, I didn't. Um, apparently, Australia remains the only Commonwealth country to have never signed a treaty with its indigenous people. While treaties were established early on in the British Dominion, such as New Zealand, Canada, and the US, this situation in Australia has been different. We we don't have this agreement and treaty with our native landowners. And that's why, like, January 26 is such a hotly debated date. 
do you want to for the, for the international people who aren't familiar with Australia? Do you want to say what that day is uh, or it's what it's known as? Australia Day, quote unquote. Yeah, quote unquote. Um, and then I guess there's the argument of that it's really like Invasion Day of when white people came over and started to cause a bit of a, a ruckus. Um, which was the mark, it was the 1778 arrival of the first fleet of the British ships at Port Jackson, New South Wales, where they raised the flag of the of Great Britain at Sydney Cove by Arthur Phillip. Just for some history. Mm. So that that date does not have anything to do with the Aboriginal people that were here first. It's purely to do with that dude putting that flag up. And f- yeah, exactly. Which seems pretty messed up and it's interesting because Australia's a Commonwealth country Australia um, celebrates Australia Day mm. but 350 years ago it's not Australia's been going on for a long time <laughs> yeah and we say Australia like we're, like we're different from the British mm. when you celebrate Australia Day aren't you celebrating the British you're celebrating the people who colonised this country. And in fact, and I say that because, well, it sounds interesting because I don't think many people really think of that. Well, look at our flag. Oh, it's like very the, true. The, look at the flag you're holding. The Union Jack. Yes, the Union Jack, a derivative of the, the British flag. Mm. It's like, huh. Now, I know a lot, we have a, we have a presence of, of British people in Australia, but, you know, and they do come from English backgrounds usually. But I think... People identify as being Aussie as Australian. Do you think many of them identify as being British? I think it's becoming its own thing. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. And I'm not really on board with with Australia Day. I mean, like it used to be before. I didn't I knew think more. about it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know. Yeah, I, just, I just like, wasn't aware. Australia Day. Yeah, whatever. Day off, public but holiday. But then they're like, uh, oh, that's yeah. actually not. Yeah. That's not something that we should really be like celebrating on mm-hmm. that date. Yeah. Especially when you consider the persecution, discrimination, and the... And I don't know all the history, but how the British treated the native ant landowners, mm. Right. I like to how other native landowners um, in, in like uh, the Native Americans, for example, have been treated where, where they're pushed off their land, that some put in prisons, uh, some killed and murdered for whatever reasons. I, ne- I need to get somebody who's an expert on and talk to about it because I think it's important. Mm. Um, but under that framework, under what's happened there, that doesn't sound like a day to celebrate. Mm. Considering the, what that's begi- what that started, what it signifies, yeah. yes, yeah. And then <laughs> I don't know if you saw recently, old mate Scomo. He um, what did he say? He wanted to acknowledge the frontline workers, yeah. So like the nurses and all that on January twenty sixth, like have a special part of the day. I'm like, can't pick another day on the calendar that's like less controversial than the other 365 days of the year. Maybe he's trying to, I don't know, this, it would be, I would assume he has malevolent intentions, but maybe he's trying to distract from it by yeah, adding something know. nicer to it. Or you could just, I don't know. <laughs> Put on another day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's an odd one. Yeah. Why would you do that? Yeah. But he didn't. He just said it. Oh, it's, it's thrown out there. Huh. It, is, it could probably I think. Oh, you could pick a lot more relevant days in March, April when all this kicked off. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know what? You know, uh, Prime Minister, Mr. Morrison, <laughs> let's talk, man. <laughs> Can you imagine him walking in? Christian just barges in. <laughs> you know, because for those who don't know, Christian just barged in just earlier. It's like, because sometimes he does that. Yeah. I'm going to have like some super serious guest on. <laughs> imagine if I, like, I knew a celebrity, I had him on. He... <laughs> You see his face when he walks in. He's just like... Who are you? Caught in the deer in <laughs> headlights. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, no, but you seem like a person who's, who's, who's quite uh, forward-thinking, open-minded, and um, conscious mm. of the environment, 
of ideas, of history. How did you become that? Who taught you that? It's definitely influenced from from my mum, but also just, I think, me, as I said, growing up, just starting to to care about more things. You gotta find what it is you enjoy, what what things you value. And I guess I've kind of, I've always had an appreciation for the environment, um, but that's more so come about now, in recent times with all the, the climate change stuff and thinking, oh, what, what can I do to make a difference? Or how can I be better myself? Um, What's the conclusion you're coming to? How can you be better? Well, I made like some changes just just in general, just being more aware, just trying to use less single use um, plastics, Absolutely. that sort of thing. Um, yeah, reuse things. Also made some changes to my diet. Um, so eating more like plant-based, not more, a plant-based diet um, instead. And yeah, just doing the, the little things that, that I can. Nice. Um, so yeah, so that that's what I've been been doing. That's great. And yeah, and initially I just set it out as like a, a challenge, like oh, can I do this for for two weeks? And mm. then I kind of just like yeah, I'll just stick with it. And um, and just researching into things like myself on on my own terms, yeah. like through throughout high school myself. If I didn't want to do something, <laughs> I it'd be very if I wasn't interested, it'd be very hard to get me on board. Like the kids in the go-to journals. Yeah, hmm. yeah. If I didn't see a reason behind it, like obviously I still, I still did my work. I still studied because I had mum on my back, and she was like, "Education is important." Um, but yeah, if but now it, I think, and I've had this discussion like with with Decranus as well. Like, yeah, when you are interested in something, something kind of like jumps at you, and you want to look into it on your own terms you are a hell of a lot more motivated yes. than if you have to be in this place at this time every single day. And I completely understand that the kids at school, that, that school is hard. So you got to rock up, you got to stick to that timetable. You look at what you've got on for the day. Oh, I've got science, I've got maths, I've got English, I've got pay. I'm excited for this. Oh, can't be bothered with this. Da 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 da. Um, so yeah, just really coming about from that and like reading into things, watching some documentaries. You know that documentaries aren't the most legitimate source of information. It's um, only really one yes. perspective. And, and I'm glad you realise that. And I already know biased. which one you're, you're referring to yeah. um, in particular. <laughs> and I dive down that rabbit hole for dozens of hours. Mm. I'm going through debates of like plant-based, meat-based. You know, I have a huge document that goes arguments for and against plants, meat, plants, meat. Mm. And I think th this is a nuanced conversation, guys. There is a lot of detail. Oh, there's so much. But and there's only so much that you can fit into a documentary. Exactly. Exactly. This, people spend their whole lives as researchers trying to find truths. And, and, and But here's the thing. Nutrition science, it's very difficult. Yeah, 100%. Right? Um, and people, they attach their identity to it. They become very emotional about it. You challenge, you challenge their, their diet. You challenge their identity. Mm. It's like, no, they're separate things, guys. And we can... You, you, you're not... You're not uh, a terrible person if you necessarily eat meat. You're not the best person if you eat only plants, but you're also not the worst person if you eat only plants. And you're not the best person if you eat only meat. Mm. Um, and, I, and I say that because, okay, what can we do then? All right, if 97-ish percent of the population um, eat meat mm. consistently, all right, cool. Um, is it realistic to see the whole world go plant-based? Probably not. But what can we do? All right. The, you spend maybe like a you, you, like the decisions you're making you are deciding to consume a, a lower amount of certain meat-based products now what's a, how can you have your cake and eat it too let's think about it there's some interesting evidence showing the uh global emissions uh, pardon me the yeah the global emissions effects of organically sourced food uh meat and plants versus non-organically sourced uh, meat and plants. So we talk about more grass-fed pasture-raised mm. versus factory farmed, uh, more industrial monocrop culture. And what we see is that, fuck, I might even pull it up if I can do this quick enough. Uh, what we see is that the organic I and the, the pasture-raised is actually a pretty effective decision to make to reduce those emissions. 
And so, all right, maybe I can't, maybe I don't want to, maybe I need to can keep consuming X and Y meat products for whatever reason. Well, how can I make a different, better quality, apologies for that sound. Yeah, that just like, woo. <laughs> how can I make, for those listening, I just got a big old Windows 10 sound. Um, Felt that in my parietal lobe. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Here it is. Evaluating the environmental impact of various dietary patterns combined with different food production systems. Average environmental impact. Comparison among the various dietary patterns expressed as the average of the results obtained through three different perspectives. So we have the omnivorous diet based on conventional farming. We have the omnivorous diet based on organic farming. Um, and then they have a vegan group, a vegetarian group, and a normal group, and then an omnivore group. And the bottom of the list was the vegan diet based on organic agriculture. So we saw the lowest points of resources used, economical, best economical quality, and also human health was ranked. But what was next to that, just a little bit above it, was the omnivorous diet based on... Uh, Omnivorous. No, that was the vegan. The vegan diet was based on conventional farming. So vegan, vegan were the first two. Then the vegetarian. Then the vegetarian. Okay. But then if we look at the omnivorous diet based on organic farming, it was within the ballpark of the vegan and vegetarian diets, more specifically the veg vegetarian diets. So I say that to say, you can look that up if you want to see more details, but it's interesting to say that, hold on, maybe... We can change from conventional to organic to pasture raised. Mm. Thanks for being patient there. Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, mm. and it's in, like, as I said, I'm just thinking of ways that that I can be better myself. Because you could eat an omnivorous diet, and then maybe you don't drive your car. Maybe you take public transport every day. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe, you maybe you yeah. ride your bike. Great point. So that's the thing that you're doing. I don't care what you do. You do your thing. I'll do mine. Like. I'm not going to try and push my views and my um, perspectives onto people. Like, if people want to have a chat about it, I'm I'm sweet and I'm all for that. Um, but, yeah, just kind of just trying to find ways to, to do things. Yeah, when you try and change people and force things down, I've done that before. It just... Nah, it, it backfires. Just, you're not going to... It just makes them more resistant. Yeah. It gets digs their feet further into the ground. <laughs> Think of talking to that guy downstairs. You'd yeah. be like, nah. <laughs> no, but I talked to him about this. I talked to Christian about, like... He had all these fucking, all these bottles, all these um, uh, single-use plastic bottles. I'm like... Oh, he'd always go down to the servo and get bottled water. M mate, just get a drink bottle and yeah. fill it up. And his intention was, I want it for the clients and everybody. I'm like, all right, it's good intentions. But install a water system. Mm. Um, boil the kettle. Like, and like, all right, I know how this sounds. When you talk about these things, for some people, it's like, oh, here we go. <laughs> One of those guys, huh? <laughs> Well, guess what, motherfucker? <laughs> I don't even know where to start because it's that overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Because when I go to Hong Kong and I, you see, and this is just an example because Asia's really polluted, mm. right? When we have gone hours off the beaten path, right? And we're doing, we're doing a hike uh, back in like the, 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 the mountains to find this beach in, in Hong Kong. And you see just a river full of trash yeah i'm like that's us yeah and that is taking that's going to take thousands to tens of thousands of years to to degrade and then those microplastics are going to get in our water and those that's going to get in our food supply and our water system mm -hmm. so it's all about finding what people care about what do you care about do you care about your health okay then there's a justification for for not using single single use plastics um the environment, animals, like I think we can all find something where we can make a better decision for humanity and for the other inhabitants on this planet. Mm. Just find your thing and do it. Yeah. Like, roll with it. As long as you do something. Like you'd rather have a bunch of imperfects. Like yeah. a million people trying to make a difference as opposed to like 500 just being absolutely... It's a great point. Like huh. you can make a lot more difference that yeah. way. Like... Yeah, like what if everyone just did like 0.1% of change or 1% of change instead of trying to get everybody to flip, mm. right? And like I know people that have started like not eating meat 
one day a week. Cool. Like, Good that's start. the change. Yeah. And you know what? I was talking to Lockie Kennett, Jerry Borzillo. We, we talk about kangaroo. Oh, yeah. I used to eat kangaroo. I used right? to eat it all the time. Well, guess what? Maybe used to, you don't have to always used to. Maybe it's something you can incorporate if you're going to pick a meat product. But think about it. Wild animal. It's not, it doesn't use any resources from a, well, that's not true. It doesn't use any resources from a farming, uh, if we have to talk about like breeding and farming within, mm. a, within a, uh, a factory, for example. Um, you are essentially taking a wild animal that's very overpopulated, by the way. Um, do you know how many, do you remember how yeah, many kangaroos? You, you said, you, you, yeah, you got there's it? a lot. <laughs> for every person in Australia, it equates to about two. Mm. Right? So there's about 50 million kangaroos. 40, 50 million. It's a wild animal. And so if you're going to wa- picking wild animals um, that are especially overpopulated and, and potentially need to be reduced uh, can be a lot more, a lot more smarter way to pick your food choices from a global climate um, resource heavy, water intensive, like all yeah, these just resources. Just a sustainability. Susta- thank you. It's a much better word. <laughs> I'm trying to put all the things inside sustainability. Oh, my God. It's all right. You just, sustainability is the umbrella you just like. Yeah. But you, exactly. You're well said. Um, sustainability. And so maybe that's a decision people can make instead of going for the beef all the time, which is quite water intensive and a lot of methane. And Think about how much water goes into like those crops for that cow yeah, to absolutely. eat. And at the same time, though, um, you know, things like chocolate, and coffee, they use a lot of water too. They use mm. a lot of resources, and they have their own. They have quite high emissions too. Um, you know, we're not abstained from um, from contributing to the worsening of the planet. No one is, uh, but it's just about managing those decisions. And I, but I think people, some would think that just because I'm doing plant-based only, um, and I'm eating at only organic stores like that, I'm not. Oh, no, my my hands are not. There's no blood on my hands. Well, no one's, no one's not guilty. No one is completely uh, guilt-free, or not me. Not guilty is the word, but um, a lot of animals are uh, displaced and even killed through mono monocrop culture, where you have to plant and harvest things like wheat and different types of vegetation. Like having these huge farms that, so even plant-based farms. If they're, they're monoculture, mono, then it's, it's going to displace a lot of animals usually. Mm. And um, I don't know, it's just about making better decisions, more effective quality decisions. 100%. <sighs> Amy Melander. I could keep talking to you. I know. <laughs> there's, there's a lot that we could talk about. Is there anything else you want to touch on or comment on? Um, any last thoughts or asks no. of the people listening? No. We've just kind of delved into a different side rather than the, the WSSC side. Absolutely. Yeah. That's important mm. to figure out who people really are. Mm. You know? Well, I'm grateful for you and I'm grateful for this conf- conversation yeah. and your... This conversation. Di- <laughs> I like what you did there. And your the vulnerability that you shared like um i hope it's i really enjoyed this conversation i hope people will uh enjoy it too and take some take some value it's a good one thank you amy appreciate it anywhere people, people can find you got any social media anything you want uh, to people to yeah well i've just got really my my personal insta amy mal 22 got it um but yeah that's thank, it thank you amy melanda no problemo done you are watching talking or listening to talking chimps do you expect us to behave do you expect a chimp to behave in a zoo and how are you gonna expect us to behave we're in a fucking zoo it's called the fucking planet spinning around in a marble hurling through space wondering when the fuck we're gonna get off this ride never <laughs> we're stuck and we're in a milky way which is in another universe in another universe in another universe in another universe